Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Harry Potter. Sacrifice of All Things. Chapter 26. So, in this regard, you don't have to worry at all. No one will target you because of your identity. Someone will target you only because you hinder their interests. Apart from that, even a family like the Malfoys will not target you for no reason. Well, that's good. At least you don't have to worry about not being able to adapt to the environment. Turners looked at Hermione who was relieved, shook his head and smiled gently. After all, she was still a child. She couldn't see through these things. As long as an adult could see, the proportion of muggle-born wizards in the entire magic world has always been very high. Those who hate or reject muggle-born wizards are just because this allows them to maintain their superior status of pure-blooded origin. They really want them to unite to resist muggle wizards. They are not that stupid. Doing so is just a thankless task. By the way, I'll give this to you. As he said, Turnus took out a dragon skin bag from his jacket pocket. This is also a space bag. The space inside is not very large, only about one cubic meter in size, but it is enough to hold a lot of things, which is just right for Hermione at this time. Hermione took the bag handed over by turns with some doubts and looked at it carefully in her hand. What is this? What's in it? It's not that Hermione has never guessed that this is a space bag. However, in Hermione's imagination, the value of such a space bag must be very high. Even a noble in the wizarding world like Turns would not be so rich and generous that he would give it away just like that. This is a space bag. The space inside is not big. Just because you need it, I'll give it to you. Turns said it very easily, but it sounded like thunder in Hermione's ears. Hermione quickly handed the dragon skin bag in her hand back to Turnus, and shook her head and said, I can't have this thing, it's too precious, I can't accept it. Turnus had thought of this long ago, and didn't reach out to take it. Since it was a gift given, how could it be taken back? Moreover, it was not as Hermione thought, the space bag was very precious. Indeed, in the entire magic world, it is very difficult to make a space bag with enough space, and the cost of a better space bag is also very high. However, this certainly does not include Turnus. With Turnus's current worth, it is easy to get such a bag. For him, it has no value. Besides, as the default heir of the Longbottom family, Turnus wants such a bag, but he really can't make it now. But whether it is his parents, or his grandmother, or those followers who serve the Longbottom family, many people can easily make it. The production of this thing is not as complicated as imagined. You know, in the original book, Hermione was able to make a pearl-shaped space bag by herself when she was in grade 6. It can be seen that this thing does have technical content, but it is not as mysterious as imagined. Okay, don't think too much. It does take some skills to make this thing. However, in our Longbottom family, my parents and my grandmother can easily make it. Turnus felt that this explanation was not enough. He tilted his head and thought for a while, and continued, the technical content of this thing is just the level of a 6th or 7th grade honors student. As for the material cost, let me give it to you as a Christmas gift in advance. When the time comes, you can also give me a gift, a mechanical watch from the Muggle world. I am quite interested in that. Hermione confirmed again with some uncertainty, is what you said true? Isn't this space bag valuable? Indeed, the material cost of this thing is just the value of a pair of dragon leather gloves. Besides, this is just what I changed. It will just be eaten by dust if it is left with me. It is better to give it to you. It is convenient for you and I can make friends with you. Then we are friends now, right? Looking at Turnus's expectant eyes, Hermione smiled and said happily, Of course, we are already friends. I am very happy to have made friends with you two at the beginning. Hermione still has some emotional intelligence. She did not forget Neville beside her. Even though Neville did not say a few words from the beginning, like a transparent person, she still did not forget this boy. Well, we are already friends. I am also very happy to be friends with such a beautiful girl like you, right? Neville. Turns said, turning his eyes to the little transparent Neville beside him. Neville nodded happily. From childhood to adulthood, he only had Turns as a friend. Now he can make a friend, he is also very happy. Okay, you should pack it too. This dragon skin bag should be able to hold your luggage. It will be much more convenient to carry it with you. 
Do you need our help? Well, I have to trouble you to help me take down the suitcase. Hermione said a little embarrassedly. That's no problem. Ternas took Hermione's luggage from the luggage rack. Hermione was still a little unfamiliar with the use of the dragon skin bag. After groping for a while, she put the luggage in. Then, she was very curious and took out and put in a few things in it. She had a lot of fun, just like a child who got a new toy. Well, that's not right. This is just a child getting a toy. Thinking of this, Turnus couldn't help laughing and shook his head. During this period, Turnus's messenger, a goshawk named Wa Shuo, came to see him. Wa Shuo was an injured goshawk that Turnus accidentally rescued a year ago, and no one knew why it was injured. However, after Turnus cured it, Wa Shuo did not leave Turnus, but followed him all the time. Later, he also felt that such a flying pet was good. Besides, although he already had Si Nuo as a pet, he didn't have a messenger, so he took Wa Shuo in. He also used special magic potions to train Wa Shuo into a messenger, and then allocated his resources. At this time, Wa Shuo was no longer an ordinary goshawk, but a magical goshawk messenger. The magic power contained in it was stronger than that of an ordinary high-quality owl messenger. After everything was packed up, the Hogwarts Express had arrived at the destination. The platform here did not have too many modern settings. It was just a platform. There was nothing else. It could only make it easier for people to get off the train. Here, a very tall person had been waiting. This person was three meters tall. Even among the freshmen, Turners, who was considered tall, was just up to his thigh. He was holding a huge lamp in his hand. The light was very bright, but in this place where there was no other light source, this little light was nothing. Fortunately, it was not just the freshmen who got off the Hogwarts Express, but also people from other grades. Many of them, after seeing the darkness around them, drew their wands and cast magic to illuminate the surroundings. However, after the senior students left in the carriage, the surroundings suddenly fell into darkness without the, fluorescent flashing, lighting magic they cast. This made the freshmen feel a little overwhelmed. At this time, they had no contact with magic, and at this time, without a backbone, a group of 11-year-old children were also overwhelmed. Turners looked at the dark situation around him and was helpless. Even if he wanted to experience it, the previous people would not have gone through hardships. He couldn't stand walking on such a muddy path without even a light. He reached into his dragon skin pocket and took out a fist-sized ball of light. This ball of light was not big, but the light it emitted was very strong. It was not the kind of dazzling intensity, but it could shine very far, 360 degrees without dead angles. The light it emitted was more like milky white, very soft, and even if you look directly at it with your naked eyes, you won't feel any discomfort. Looking at the light ball magic prop in Turner's hand, the children around were very happy at this time. Compared with darkness, they still prefer light. In this way, Turner's, who took out this prop, was in the limelight. This made Draco, who had some conflicts with Turner's before, a little unhappy. HMPH, what's the big deal? There are many better magic props in Malfoy Manor. I just forgot to bring it. Draco held his head proudly, looking very contemptuous. The two little followers beside him quickly responded. When Neville saw his brother take out this thing, he remembered that he also had it, so he quickly took it out. With these two light balls, a large area of darkness around was illuminated. At the front of the team, the leader Hagrid also found the problem at this time, looked back, but did not say much. Although suffering is a common practice in Hogwarts over the years, it is not necessary. It is just some customary rules, not school rules that must be strictly followed, and there is no need to force it. Harry and Ronald, who have been following Hagrid, naturally discovered it. They can't take care of it themselves, so how can they care about so many things? A group of little wizards followed Hagrid all the time. After walking a long way, they finally reached the edge of the Black Lake. This is already the territory of Hogwarts. After crossing the Black Lake, you can see the castle of Hogwarts. Many small boats have been parked here. At this time, Hagrid turned around and said to the little wizards behind him in a deep voice, Okay, little guys, every four people take a small boat, we will be there soon, be careful, don't capsize the boat. The little wizards were very obedient. 
In this unfamiliar environment, they naturally followed the instructions of the leader. One by one, they quickly found their own boats and got on. Hermione naturally took a boat with Turns and Neville, and a little wizard also got on their boat. However, this was not a good time to introduce themselves, so they did not introduce themselves, but just nodded silently as a greeting. Is everyone ready? Is anyone left behind? If not, then we will set off. Not long after, Hagrid's loud voice came through. After not hearing anyone's feedback, Hagrid did not hesitate, and knocked on the bow of the small boat he was on with the umbrella in his hand. Soon, the boat took the lead and slowly sailed to the other end of the Black Lake. On the way, they also passed a stone bridge, which was a little lower than the lake. When Hagrid passed by, he shouted, Watch your head. After a while of boating, the boat finally docked. Here, there is a small pier for the little wizards to land. After everyone got on the shore, the small boat slowly sailed away from here under a mysterious force. I think they should have returned to where they stayed before, waiting for the arrival of the next batch of freshmen. Everyone didn't pay attention to these, but looked at the ancient castle in front of them with flashing eyes. The area of this castle is very large, and it reveals a very ancient atmosphere, which looks very solemn and solemn. At the gate of the castle, there is already an old female wizard waiting. She is wearing a dark green wizard robe and a pointed hat. There is no expression on her face, which gives people a very stern impression. Professor McGonagall, I have brought the freshmen here, not one is missing. Hagrid greeted the witch in a loud voice. Professor McGonagall nodded seriously, well, leave it to me, you should go back to the hall. Okay, then I'll leave it to you, Professor. After saying hello to Hagrid and Harry, he left here, probably going to the hall. Okay, everyone, there is still a little time now, I think you'd better tidy up your clothes, we will start the sorting ceremony soon. After Professor McGonagall said something to the little wizards, he turned around and knocked on the door handle of the castle gate with the wand in his hand. The door opened a crack, and Professor McGonagall walked in. After she entered, the door closed again. Obviously, it was not time for them to enter the castle yet, and they also needed to wait. Hermione, who was in front of Turnus, was very nervous at this time. She didn't know how the sorting ceremony would start this time. But from the way she was mumbling, it seemed that there would be an exam for this sorting ceremony. This might be normal in the muggle world, where people are educated differently based on their knowledge reserves. But what she didn't notice was that this was the wizarding world, and it didn't need to be so troublesome here. Moreover, the conditions for sorting in Hogwarts were not based on intelligence, but on a person's character. Although it felt a little funny, Turnus didn't stop it. This might be better. After all, Hermione was in contact with the wizarding world for the first time, and she also needed to use this method to relieve her tense spirit. Then, Turnus heard some discussions from other little wizards. These people were obviously tricked by their elders or brothers and sisters, just like Ronald. As far as he knew, it seemed that the sorting ceremony this time required a battle with a giant monster. This is ridiculous. If this is true, with the strength of these freshmen, not counting Turners, if one of these little wizards survived, he would be lucky. However, even so, Ronald's remarks resonated with many little wizards. Obviously, many brothers and sisters in many families spared no effort in tricking their younger brothers and sisters. These remarks even affected Neville, not to mention Hermione, who had never been in contact with the magic world. At this time, Hermione couldn't help but tremble slightly when listening to the remarks of the little wizards around her. Seeing this, Turners found it funny, but in this case, comforting the other party would have a better effect, and he would not miss this opportunity. Turnus patted Hermione's shoulder gently and comforted her softly. Don't worry, you should have seen those magical creatures in books. With their strength, if they are used as the test objects, no one here can survive. The school can't do that. The sorting ceremony should not be difficult. Don't worry. After hearing Turnus' words, the little wizards around stopped discussing and began to think. Yes. If that's the case, why are they here, to die? Everyone now understands that they were tricked by their brothers and sisters. Although they are not happy, they are relieved. Hermione heard Turnus' words and felt that they made sense. She smiled at Turnus who comforted her, and she was no longer nervous as before. 
After Turnus's comfort, the whole freshman team settled down at once, without the previous turmoil and anxiety. Not long after all the freshmen settled down, a very messy noise came from behind them. These voices included many kinds, including men's and women's, cold and passionate, arrogant and self-abased. When the freshmen looked back out of curiosity, a group of objects with translucent bodies flew from behind them, pointing at them. These people must be the ghosts of Hogwarts. They are not dangerous, they are just ghosts without any threat. Moreover, as the ghosts of Hogwarts, they are also a kind of heritage of this college. These guys have existed for an unknown period of time. Naturally, the things they can contact and understand are countless. If they can get a little guidance from them, what they can gain is undoubtedly remarkable. However, such existence is rare even in the magic world. Even if they can be seen, they are the kind of threatening ghosts. That kind of existence is not something that these little wizards can contact. So, when they first saw these ghosts, everyone was scared. After all, ghosts have always been feared by humans. Their existence is weird, and some people's deaths are not very elegant, which scared these little wizards. Especially those wizards who were born in muggles, they were very timid. It was because there were so many people here that they had a little confidence and did not run away immediately, but screams one after another were inevitable. These ghosts seemed to have gotten used to the attitude of the new little wizards. They were not angry about their attitude. Some of them were good and even wanted to recommend the colleges they came from to these little guys, hoping that they could become their descendants. They did not stay here, but simply said hello, and then passed through the wall one by one and entered the Hogwarts castle. Not long after they entered, Professor McGonagall, who had been away for a long time, came out again. This time, the gate of the Hogwarts castle was not closed again, but opened. The scene inside was also reflected in the eyes of all the freshmen. What came into view was a huge auditorium with four very long tables. There were many people sitting at each table, and they should be students older than them. Above each table, the flags of their respective colleges were flying, namely the red and gold lion flag of Gryffindor, the silver and green snake flag of Slytherin, the blue and cyan eagle flag of Ravenclaw, and the yellow and gray badger flag of Hufflepuff. At the innermost side of the auditorium, there was a high platform with a long table on it. On the inner side of the table, there were a group of adult wizards sitting, they should be the professors of this college. The old wizard sitting in the middle, with white hair and a long beard, should be the headmaster of this school, Albus Dumbledore. In front of these teachers' seats, there was a very simple triangular stool with a dirty hat on it, which must be the sorting hat. Led by Professor McGonagall, the freshmen slowly walked to the middle of the four long tables and lined up in a long line. After the freshmen were in place, the sorting hat began his performance. Although the singing was a bit irritating, it was still within the tolerance range, and turns could bear it. Until the performance of the sorting hat was over, Professor McGonagall, who was standing on the side, came forward again and began to preside over the sorting of freshmen this time. Okay, now the people whose names I call, come here and put on the hat. Professor McGonagall's serious face had no expression. She held a long piece of parchment in her hand, and on the parchment was the list of freshmen who came to Hogwarts this time. The first one, Hannah Abbott. After a long time, it was finally Hermione's turn, and she saw her step forward to put on the sorting hat. But just after putting it on, the sorting hat had already made its decision, Gryffindor. This was expected, and Turns was not surprised. Perhaps Hermione is indeed very studious and a top student. However, she also has great courage. She can firmly support a matter regardless of other people's obstruction. For example, she has been fighting for the rights of elves until the end. This is not something that ordinary people can do. There are many other aspects. When courage is needed, Hermione has never lacked it. After Hermione, it is Turnus. When Professor McGonagall called his name, Turnus quickly walked forward, sat on the chair, and put the sorting hat on his head. He only heard a faint voice in his ear, very interesting little guy, although many things are blocked, but from the appearance, you are a very mature child, not only have the shrewdness of Slytherin, but also have the wisdom of Ravenclaw and the courage of Gryffindor. So, where should you be sorted? Turnus knew what the sorting hat said. His memory would always be protected by the altar. Unless he volunteered, no one would be able to steal his memory from his mind. 
After hearing what the Sorting Hat said, Turnus thought for a moment and then replied, Put me in Gryffindor, where I might be more comfortable. Slytherin is not bad either, but the intrigue there is too tiring. The learning atmosphere in Ravenclaw is too intense. I don't want to be that tired, at least in the first few years. Hmm, that's a good idea. Okay, Gryffindor. As the Sorting Hat announced his decision, Turnus took the Sorting Hat off his head. After putting the hat on the stool, Turnus walked towards the boiling Gryffindor table. At this time, the Gryffindor table was celebrating enthusiastically because of the addition of a new student. This is not because Turner's is so popular, it is just a habit. Each college will be welcomed by the seniors of that college after a student is assigned to it. Before Turner's walked over, Hermione had already waved to him. Of course, the meaning was not to let him go over. After all, Hermione was surrounded by senior girls, and he was embarrassed to go over. Turner's sat on a stool and continued to watch the ceremony. This ceremony lasted for a long time. When the last person was sorted, the atmosphere in the whole venue suddenly began to boil. At this time, everyone was very hungry, not only for their extra juniors and sisters, but also for the delicious food that they could eat soon. Dumbledore, who was sitting on the stage, stood up at this time, and cast an amplification spell on his throat with the wand in his hand. Then his voice overwhelmed the noise of everyone in the hall. Okay, gentlemen and ladies, everyone is already very hungry. I just want to say, idiot. Crying. Leftovers. Twist. Please enjoy the food slowly. As Dumbledore finished speaking, the empty plates in front of Turnus and the others were filled with food in the blink of an eye. Looking at the sumptuous dinner in front of him, Turnus did not show much interest. The deliciousness of these foods was not as good as the delicacies he had eaten at home. Just make do with it. Turnus is not a spoiled young master. He can still eat these foods. Besides, this is the national situation of the Great Eagle Country. Dark cuisine is famous. It is very good to have such delicious food. Turnus ate the food on the table slowly and carefully. He was a little special on the whole table. To be honest, maybe he was really hungry before. Every student here didn't look very good at eating at this time. After the main meal, there was dessert. Turners ate a little of each. It was evening now, so he didn't eat too much. He had always been careful about his eating habits. After dinner, he naturally had to start the last project of the night, singing the school song. Turners had a deep memory of this part. Not only was it horrible as described by Aunt Rowling, but the performance in the movie was also very scary. So, in order to prevent his ears from suffering, he was ready when Dumbledore stood up. After announcing some prohibitions, Dumbledore began to direct everyone to sing the school song. Turners was focused, just waiting for this moment, so he naturally started immediately. With a light wave of the wand, an ear-blocking spell was cast, blocking his ears and reducing his hearing to the lowest level. Then, he followed the others and pretended to open his mouth to fool them. No one would notice Turner's tricks. After all, there were at least 700 to 800 people in the auditorium. If you want to notice someone, no one would notice their tricks unless they were watching them. Turner's looked at the note that slowly floated out from the tip of Dumbledore's wand and couldn't help but smack his lips. It wasn't that the spellcasting skills were so brilliant, but that Dumbledore used the old wand to do such a thing, which made his mouth twitch involuntarily. After the notes disappeared, Turnus lifted his earplug spell. Under the leadership of the prefect, he followed him and walked towards the Gryffindor lounge. When he passed by, Neville and Hermione also squeezed in with him. This is the benefit of leaving a first impression. When possible, gathering with people who are familiar with you is the most common behavior of human beings. After Hermione came to Turnus, she was very interested in what she had seen and heard during this period of time, and kept telling her discoveries. Turnus was not impatient, but listened carefully. For girls like Hermione, it is a good thing to let them express their feelings. As long as you can show that you listen carefully, you can get their favor. Soon, the Gryffindor Tower arrived. There was a huge public lounge here, with some sofas placed inside, and a large fireplace embedded on the wall on the side. It was not lit at this time, after all, it was summer now. The Gryffindor common room is divided into two parts, male and female. Girls can enter and exit the boys' common room freely, but boys are forbidden to enter the girls' dormitory. 
Turnus has been unable to complain about this rule since he watched a movie. Haven't Western countries always advocated gender equality? Why is it unequal at this time? At this time, it was not early. After saying goodbye to Hermione, Turnus and Neville followed the other students and walked towards their dormitory belonging to the boys. The Gryffindor common room is a dormitory for four people. Turnus and Neville's common room is in the same room, and their other two roommates are Harry Potter and Ronald Weasley. The four people knew each other, and now they were assigned to the same dormitory, so naturally they exchanged some pleasantries. However, they just said hello and didn't say a few words. After that, they couldn't bear the sleepiness anymore, fell on the bed, and fell asleep. They didn't even have time to pack their things before they fell asleep. This day was quite tiring. We started early and went to King's Cross Station, and took the Hogwarts Express. It was not until dark that we finally arrived at our destination. Then we walked at night and took a boat, and finally arrived at Hogwarts Castle. Then the sorting ceremony began, and after the sorting, we had dinner and sang. Now, we can finally rest for a while. At this time, we are relaxed, how can we hold on? After all, they are just 11-year-old children, and it is very good that they can hold on until now. Turns did not go forward to disturb the rest of the few people. Although his body has been strengthened a lot by various natural materials and treasures, it is not far from that of ordinary adults. But other people are not like him. Sitting at the head of the bed, he took out his gift from the dragon skin bag, put it one by one, picked up the course schedule on the bed, looked at the books to be used tomorrow, and after sorting them out, he lay down on the bed and began to rest. As some people say, a person's life is just a blink of an eye, and a day passes by. The same is true for Turner's. When he opened his eyes again, it was already the next morning. Turnus looked at the magic watch on his wrist, and the real time was only a little over five in the morning. Their class time was nine in the morning, which meant that it was still early. However, Turnus, who had developed the habit of going to bed early and getting up early, was not very sleepy, so he got up, dressed, and went to the public lounge outside the dormitory. There was no one here at this time, so Turnus sat on the sofa in the public lounge alone. He took out a book on Transfiguration, Beginner's Transfiguration Guide, from his dragon skin pocket and started reading. This was the course he was going to take next, so he just treated it as a preview in advance. As time went by, there was some movement in the entire Gryffindor lounge. No matter which college, there is a group of hard-working students. They may not have good academic performance, but they can get up early to study. Of course, depending on the nature of each college, the number of such people is also different, but the only thing that can be confirmed is that there will definitely be a lot of such people. Not long after, some noises came from the Gryffindor girls' dormitory, and someone came out. Turnus glanced over there casually, and unexpectedly, the person who came out this time was his friend Hermione. When Hermione saw Turnus, she was also very surprised. She didn't expect that Turnus would get up so early. Hey, Turnus, good morning. Are you preparing here? I can't believe that a genius like you gets up earlier than us. Hermione said a little embarrassedly. She thought she got up early enough, but she didn't expect that there was someone who got up earlier than her and this person was Turnus, who was very talented and had already mastered some magic. This made Hermione, who was determined to become an excellent wizard, a little embarrassed. Yeah, I'll take a look first. I haven't had much contact with the magic taught in school before. I went to bed early last night. It's still early this morning, so I came here to take a look at the course I'm about to learn. Turnus shook the book in his hand and said to Hermione. By the way, Hermione, let's go to the hall to have breakfast together, and then go to class together. Okay, I don't know much about the situation here, maybe we can go faster if we go together. Obviously, the constantly changing stairs last night brought Hermione some bad memories. Well, it's settled then. After making an appointment, Turnus continued to read the book. This book is about the elementary guide of transfiguration. To be honest, the content is still very good. At least it can introduce some basics of transfiguration in a simple and easy to understand way. He didn't talk big right away and said some nonsense. Hermione saw that Turnus began to immerse himself in the book again, so she didn't disturb him. 
Hermione returned to her dorm, where her three roommates were already up. And she could pack her luggage without disturbing others. After some sorting, Hermione finally nodded with satisfaction. She took out her pocket watch and checked the time. She found that it was already 7.50 before she knew it. Has it been so long? Hermione was a little surprised. Suddenly, she remembered something. She and Turnus still had a date. Now she looked at the time and it was late. She didn't know if Turnus was still there. Hermione didn't have time to think about it. She quickly picked up the dragon skin bag beside her, which contained the books she needed, and rushed out. She was a little confused and didn't know what happened to Hermione. When Hermione rushed to the common room, Turnus had already put away his transfiguration books and was eating a bag of snacks. This was to kill time and fill his stomach. After all, so much time had passed, and he didn't know how long Hermione would take. He couldn't just leave, so he could only plan this way. Forget about waiting. He had heard that if you wait for a girl for several hours, you will not be able to come down. Thinking this way, Terrace grabbed another dried sweet potato and put it in his mouth to chew. Looking at Terrace chewing dried sweet potato boredly, Hermione didn't know why she always wanted to laugh. However, this matter was indeed her fault. After adjusting her expression, Hermione came to Terrace. Hey, Terrace, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting for so long. I just packed my luggage and didn't expect it to take so long. I'm so sorry. Hermione apologized sincerely. Turnus waved his hand and said nonchalantly, It's okay, the time is just right anyway, you are not late, don't worry about it, since you are here, I will go and call Neville and the others, they may still be asleep now, I will call them and come over, then we will have breakfast together. Hermione naturally would not object, and it would not take long, she nodded and said, Well, you go, I'll wait for you here. Okay, it will be soon, I will be there soon. Turnus said, and walked towards the boys' dormitory. When he arrived at the dormitory, the three guys here were still sleeping there. I really don't know how tired they are, they haven't woken up yet. Hey, you three, wake up. It's already 8 o'clock. If you don't get up, you won't be able to attend class. Our first class is the transfiguration class taught by Gryffindor Dean, Professor McGonagall. If you are late, you will suffer. Hearing Turnus's call, the three teachers in the dormitory just responded in a daze and then went back to sleep. Looking at these three hopeless guys, Turnus couldn't help but have a headache. It seems that waking up in the future is also a very important task. Fortunately, he had prepared for this. Turnus took out something similar to an alarm clock from his pocket. That's right, it was an alarm clock. However, what was different about it was that the alarm of this alarm clock was made again by Turnus using alchemy. The sound it could make at this time could not be compared with that of an ordinary alarm clock. Turners set the alarm clock to 8.05 and placed it at the door. Then, he stopped caring about it and just wanted to see if the alarm clock would work. Turners left the dormitory, closed the door, and walked towards the common room. Okay, let's go. Turners waved his hand, and the two of them walked out together and went out through the trap door of the fat lady. After a maze-like staircase, they finally arrived at the great hall. Just when they walked here and hadn't entered the hall, they suddenly heard a very loud sound, dwang. Perhaps, this sound could be heard throughout Hogwarts. Hermione was a little panicked by the sudden sound, not knowing what happened. She couldn't help but turn her head around to see where the sound came from. Okay. Stop looking. This is the sound from the Gryffindor lounge. There's nothing wrong. Turnus calmly dispelled Hermione's panic. Huh. How do you know? Hermione asked with a question mark on her forehead. Well. Then, Turnus told Hermione about the effect of his alchemical item. Hearing Turnus's prank, Hermione couldn't help but roll her eyes, you're just naughty. Let's see tonight whether the Gryffindor seniors will punish you or not. Hearing Hermione's words, Turnus only thought at this time that such a loud noise would wake up the whole Hogwarts. It is conceivable that the people in Gryffindor fell to the ground and received such a big surprise. He couldn't help but shudder when he thought of the scene where those seniors looked at him with resentment. Seeing Turnus's somewhat fearful expression, Hermione smiled unkindly. Turnus immediately noticed Hermione's smile, and he couldn't stand Hermione's gloating. He pretended to go up and beat Hermione. Seeing this, Hermione hurriedly ran to the front, 
and the two of them entered the great hall in a playful manner. Look, there are so many delicious foods here, let's eat them. Hermione pretended to be very surprised and diverted Turnus' attention. Although the method was a bit childish, Turnus didn't plan to continue playing. Well, have breakfast first, and I'll beat you after breakfast. As he said that, he sat down next to Hermione. The two sat down at the long table of Gryffindor, took some of their favorite food from the table, and started to eat breakfast. After the fight just now, Turners also put aside the worry about the storm from the seniors and ate breakfast with peace of mind. After all, it is a blessing, not a disaster. If it is a disaster, it cannot be avoided. He still understands the principle of fighting against the enemy and covering the water with earth. He only weighs a few dozen kilograms, let's see what they can do to him. Turnus was like a dead pig that was not afraid of boiling water, so he did whatever he wanted. The two of them finished their breakfast quickly. In order to avoid meeting other Gryffindors, Turnus ate quickly. Hermione didn't eat a lot, so although she ate slowly, she was almost full. While there were not many people here, Turnus pulled the full Hermione towards the Transfiguration classroom. He also thought that Turnus and his friends had just arrived at the school, and not many people in the school knew him. Even if someone knew that the prankster in the Gryffindor lounge this morning was a person named Turnus. But not everyone could recognize him, which allowed him to come to the Transfiguration classroom safely. At this time, no one had come to the classroom. After all, it was only about 8.20, and no one came at this time. At this time, Hermione also found that they came a little early, and found a seat and sat down a little embarrassedly. Turnus sat next to her and took out the, Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration, and started reading. At first, Hermione was a little embarrassed and just read her book in her seat. After a while, when the atmosphere eased, she gradually relaxed and looked at Turnus who was sitting next to her. Seeing Turnus also holding a, Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration, and reading it, she couldn't help but ask curiously, could it be that you haven't been exposed to this knowledge before? Why do you feel like you are just starting to learn skills? Looking at Turnus' puzzled eyes, Hermione asked again, could it be that your parents didn't let you read such books earlier? Just because you keep the same learning progress as other students. In the muggle world where she lives, every parent, in order to make their children better, makes them attend various tutoring classes, interest classes, etc. But in the wizarding world, it seems that this situation has never happened. Didn't I say this before? Children in the wizarding world will not awaken their magic power too early. Before that, it is useless to teach them magic knowledge, because not every child born in a wizarding family can become a wizard. There are also a small number of children who will become squibs who cannot control magic. Well, that is, people who have magic in their bodies, but cannot control it freely for various reasons. Besides, children from wizarding families also need preschool education. Basic education such as literacy accounts for a large proportion, so even if they are exposed to it in advance, there is no time. Oh. This time, Hermione had a certain understanding of the childhood life of children born in the wizarding world. This also satisfied her curiosity. Not too long, students arrived in this classroom one after another. In addition to Gryffindor students, there are also Hufflepuff students. This is a course for the two colleges. No, or rather, each course is not taught by a certain college alone, but basically, by other colleges. This not only saves professors time and spares them from so much hard work, but also enhances the relationship between students in each college. After all, Hogwarts is still one school, not four schools. There is still a place for students to interact with each other, otherwise, it will be meaningless. As the number of people increased, the classroom became lively. When Neville and the other three came, the whole classroom exploded. This time, unlike the original book, Harry and the others were not late, but came quite early. After they came, Harry and Ronald came to Turtis in a hurry, obviously to ask for an explanation. In this regard, Turtis was able to respond calmly. However, when all the Gryffindor students in the classroom, both male and female, stood up and surrounded Turtis, Turtis could no longer remain calm. What is this? It seems that this time I have offended everyone. Turnus stood up awkwardly and asked without confidence, Do you have anything to do with me? What do you think? Harry is still quite influential here. 
Seeing that no one else spoke, and Ronald behind him kept pushing him, he could only ask with a stiff face. Well, I didn't do that for your own good. I told you to get up, otherwise you would be late, right? Besides, this first class is Professor McGonagall's transfiguration class. If you are late, and the professor turns you into a pig, then you will suffer. At the beginning, I didn't have much confidence, but as I was talking, I suddenly realized that this made sense. Wasn't I just thinking about them? Why are they looking for trouble with me now? Seeing Turnus speaking more and more confidently, although I always felt that something was wrong, they were just a group of children and couldn't think of anything to refute him for a while. Just when a group of little brats didn't know what to do, a mature and steady female voice sounded. Indeed, classmate turns, it's for your own good, so that you won't be late, this is right, but, turns, the teacher will not turn a student into a pig to punish you. Hearing this voice, all the students dispersed at once and sat down in their own seats. At this time, turns saw that in front of their classroom, Professor McGonagall was pretending to be serious and looking at the students in the classroom. To be honest, the very loud bell just now, let alone the students, even she, could hear it clearly. It can be heard from such a distance, let alone in the Gryffindor common room, no wonder these children have such a big grudge. After Professor McGonagall gave turns a look of self-help, he stopped discussing the matter and began to prepare some teaching materials and tools for class. Thanks to Turner's, no one was late for Professor McGonagall's class this time. In fact, all the students arrived in the classroom 10 minutes before class. So, when the class bell rang, Professor McGonagall had already done all the preparations before class. She gave each student a match, which would be used in the next class. When the class bell rang, Professor McGonagall began her teaching. In this class, Turnus listened very carefully. Professor McGonagall is an expert in transfiguration, and she can become the dean of a college in Hogwarts school and the vice president of the school. It is enough to prove her strength. For such a wizard, her teaching experience naturally attracted Turner's special attention. After more than half an hour of theoretical teaching, the next step is to start practice. What the magic school pays more attention to is naturally the practical ability. Otherwise, after learning magic for a year, in the end, you can't cast a single magic with a belly full of theories, which is really a dilemma. Thanks to the emphasis on the control of magic from childhood to adulthood, Turnus's control over magic is naturally beyond doubt. After only two minutes of practical operation, he successfully transformed the match in his hand into a wooden needle. Since he has not yet mastered the transformation of matter, he has not yet been able to transform the wooden needle into an iron needle. However, it should be possible to complete it after a little practice. This change successfully attracted the attention of Professor McGonagall, who saw the wooden needle that had been completely transformed by Turner's. Professor McGonagall was also very surprised. You know, her expectation for these students in this class was only to make one end of the match sharp. What she didn't expect was that among her students, there was actually someone with such a talent. This made her very happy, and she immediately said, Very good, Mr. Turners, the shape has been successfully changed. Keep working hard to see if the matter can be changed. But in view of this, Gryffindor will add 10 points. After hearing what Professor McGonagall said, the other students looked at Turners in surprise one by one. You know, among them, the best one is probably Hermione, but at this time, she has just started to mobilize magic through the method taught by Professor McGonagall, and has not started to practice. Someone has already succeeded, which makes all the students look at Turns with a little strangeness. Turns doesn't care about these. For these children, as long as you can really conquer them, there is no need for them to gossip behind your back. In the original plot, the reason why Hermione performed so well and was said by Ronald was not only jealous, but also because Hermione was too arrogant and didn't know how to deal with others. Otherwise, she wouldn't cry because of Ronald's words. This is because she is not good enough, or not enough for others to admire from the bottom of their hearts. Otherwise, such a thing would not happen. After hearing turns praised by Professor McGonagall, the very competitive Hermione naturally didn't want to be left behind, and began to practice hard. However, no matter when, if you want to cast a spell successfully, you need a calm heart. 
Not to mention the little wizards now, it will definitely not take too long for each of them to awaken their wizard talents. Before that, most people did not go through systematic learning to control their magic. So, the more anxious you are, the worse you will do. And Hermione beside him is like this. In the hurried casting, not only did he fail to successfully deform the match, but also because of the output of magic, unexpected things happened. I saw that Hermione's match was actually lit for some reason. This was not a big problem. After all, even if it was lit, it was just a match, no big deal. However, this sudden change still made Hermione a little panicked. This panic, the magic in Hermione's body was a little out of control, and it suddenly surged out from the top of the wand in Hermione's hand. After coming into contact with the flame, these magic powers began to gradually change their properties due to external factors and turn to fire attributes. Ternas, who was standing by, did not pay attention to Hermione's situation at first. When he noticed the unusual fluctuations of magic power beside him, he saw the top of Hermione's wand burning like a torch. Ternas no longer hesitated, waved his wand, and a fist-sized water ball appeared at the front of his wand. Under his mental control, the water ball quickly wrapped around Hermione's wand. Not only did it extinguish the flame at the top of her wand, but it also suppressed Hermione's uncontrolled magic power. At this time, Hermione had gradually calmed down. With the help of Ternas, the fire had been extinguished, which also made her feel relieved. Hermione could not help but look at Ternas with gratitude. The change here naturally attracted the attention of Professor McGonagall, and she quickly came to the table where Hermione and the others were. How is it, Miss Hermione, are you not injured? She had checked herself, and both of them were fine, but as a responsible teacher, she still asked. Hermione's mood had calmed down at this time. After seeing Professor McGonagall's concerned eyes, Hermione's last worry was put down, and she smiled and said, It's okay, Professor, I'm fine. Well, that's good, Miss Hermione, don't be impatient, take your time, control the magic in your body, let them change the things in front of you according to your ideas, understand. Professor McGonagall taught Hermione kindly again. Well, I know, Professor. Hermione also knew that she was too impatient just now. That's good. This time, Mr. Turnus reacted quickly and helped his classmates solve a small problem. This is very good. Gryffindor gets one point. After Professor McGonagall confirmed that Hermione was fine, he looked at Turnus again and said with great appreciation. Thank you, Professor. Turnus thanked with a smile. After Professor McGonagall left, Turnus leaned to Hermione's side and whispered to Hermione, Hermione, don't be too anxious. When you use your magic, you must be calm, so that you can control the magic in your body. Well, I know, but why did you do it so easily? Hermione was still a little bothered. She still didn't understand this, didn't understand, was the gap between her and Turnus really that big? Okay, don't think too much, didn't I tell you? I awakened my wizard talent when I was five years old, and since then, I have been practicing my control over magic. So, I left five years earlier than you, and it's normal that your current magic control ability is not as good as mine. If you can compare with me, doesn't that mean I'm useless? What? You awakened your wizard talent at the age of five. This is different from what you said. Hermione looked at Turnus in shock and asked. Okay, okay, my situation is very special. Besides, although I have awakened my wizard talent at the age of five, I have not used a wand much in the past five years, nor have I learned the magic of this world. At most, I have practiced more in controlling magic. Hermione still did not recover from the shock, and said a little dully, is that so? Yes, okay, let's not talk about this. You should try it first. This time, remember what I said, relax your mind, and control the flow of magic according to your own will. In the following time, Turnus helped Hermione and taught her how to control her magic. What Turnus said was true. In these years, he really didn't learn much magic from this world. However, this does not mean that he has not learned magic. He still learned it, but it was magic from other worlds. Elemental magic, arcane magic, and very mysterious and powerful rune magic from other worlds. He has dabbled in all of these, and it is precisely because of the study of these magics that he temporarily gave up the exploration of the magic of this world. 
Of course, after five years, he only learned the basics of magic from other worlds. First, because there was no more information, he only got some introductory magic and research materials. Another reason was that there was no one to guide him, so he could only slowly explore based on some information. Of course, although the efficiency was a bit slow, after these years of research, there were certain results. With the help of Turner's, Hermione slowly began to control the magic in her body, and gradually began to be able to change the appearance of the new match through magic. While teaching Hermione, Turner's was not idle either, and he was also trying to change the material structure of the wooden needle in his hand. After continuous attempts, Turner's finally completed this very advanced operation 10 minutes before the end of get out of class. And for this, he received 10 extra points from Professor McGonagall. Of course, Hermione also received 5 extra points before the end of get out of class. This made the other students very envious. As a points system to encourage college students to work hard, being able to get so many points is also a very high honor for freshmen. After class, Turner's and the others returned to the Gryffindor lounge. At this time, it is not time for lunch yet, so basically everyone is free to move around. Although Turner's knew that there were probably many people in the lounge waiting for him to deal with him. However, he also knew that he could not retreat at this time. After all, they were all from the same college, and they could not hide from the enemy. After arriving at the Gryffindor Lounge, Turnus saw several senior students waiting here, and their faces were very ferocious. Seeing this, Harry and Ronald quickly retreated to the side. Especially Ronald, he wanted to retreat far away, because among these people, he saw two people who he absolutely did not want to provoke, otherwise, his next days would definitely not be easy. These two people are Ronald's two brothers, George and Fred. These two people like to play pranks very much, and they have a lot of magic props in their hands. Maybe they will play tricks on him at any time. Now, there was only Neville left by Turna's side, and even Hermione was pulled aside by her roommate. Turna's looked around nervously and found that there was no one in the common room who was not looking at the situation with a gloating expression. Obviously, he really offended everyone this time. Those senior students might not do anything to him, and some people with better personalities would not really do anything to him. However, George and Fred, two guys with extremely bad personalities, would definitely not let him go. Turnus was relieved when he saw this. It seems that he did not offend the whole college, and there is still a lot of room for maneuver. Moreover, he could also feel that even the small team led by George and Fred would at most make fun of him, and would not kill him. But even if it was a prank, Turnus did not want to bear it. Boy, was it you who used that magic item this morning that made it impossible for us to sleep. It was not known whether it was George or Fred who asked viciously. Well, I did it for your own good. Besides, this way, you won't be late, isn't it good? Turners said in a very gentle tone, worried that he would anger these guys accidentally. Oh, is that so? But we don't have classes this morning. Turners could clearly feel their gnashing of teeth when they spoke. Turners had no choice but to smile embarrassedly when he heard this, and he couldn't continue to talk. Well, then, you guys tell me what you want to do, let's draw a line. There was no way, Turners couldn't continue to pretend to be a grandson. Well, Fred held his right hand with his left hand, scratched his chin with his right hand, and pretended to think about how to solve this problem. Suddenly, George thought of something, his eyes lit up, and he quickly said, by the way, do you have any such alarm clocks? If so, give us ten or eight of them as compensation. Perhaps the twins have a telepathic connection. Just by asking this question, Fred stopped thinking and looked at Turner's with bright eyes. Looking at the expressions of the two guys, Turner's always had a bad feeling, but he nodded to show that he still had it. Although he could feel that if the two guys got this thing, someone would definitely suffer. However, at this time, Turners knew that it was better to die than to die. Of course, he didn't stupidly take out ten, but only gave them two, here, that's all, I don't have much, it's still quite hard to make this thing. Hearing Turner's words, George and Fred were not frustrated, but their eyes lit up. Since Turners could say this, it naturally showed that this thing was made by Turners. With such a good magic prop, they immediately thought of pulling Turners into their team to play pranks together. 
At this time, Turns had no idea that he had been targeted by two lawless bad boys. After George took the alarm clock from Turns, he turned around and blocked all the people behind them. Although at the beginning, some people were still very unconvinced and wanted to continue to make trouble for Turns. However, I don't know what Fred said. In the end, these people, one by one, returned to the boys' dormitory with a smirk on their faces. I don't know what bad water they had in their stomachs. Seeing these people push away together, the other Gryffindor seniors knew that there was no excitement here, so they all dispersed. It was not until this time that Hermione got rid of her roommate's entanglement and came to turns. As for Harry and Ronald, they also came over at this time. You two guys are really too disloyal. You actually left me and Neville and ran away. If I hadn't called you this morning, I wouldn't have used that. At this time, Turns was justified. Harry and Ronald knew that what they had just done was really disloyal, so they did not refute the words of love. Hermione, as an outsider, saw this scene clearly, but she did not say much, just smiled secretly on the side. Since the last episode, Turnus has become a little famous in Gryffindor for a period of time. Although it is not a very good reputation, it also makes the whole Gryffindor remember him. It was very peaceful for a while. On this day, Turnus was doing homework on the transfiguration subject in the common room of Gryffindor with Hermione, Harry Ronald and others. Suddenly, Neville closed his legs and jumped in from outside. Turnus did not notice it at first, and when someone was surprised, Turnus realized this situation. Seeing this, Turnus knew that Neville was being teased. In the original book, Neville was unlucky and often got into trouble due to some intentional or unintentional accidents. In the past, few people would stand up for Neville and stand up for him. However, it is indeed different from the original plot now. Here, he has his cousin. As his brother, Terrace will definitely not let others bully Neville like this. Terrace first drew out his wand, waved it gently, and untied the spell on Neville, and then asked with a bad face, Neville, what's going on? Although Neville has a good relationship with Terrace since childhood, the two have never quarreled. Moreover, Terrace is indeed very good to Neville, but as a brother who grew up together, Neville still has a fear of Terrace in his heart. Especially when Terrace becomes serious, even if this seriousness is not because he made a mistake. However, Neville's character still makes him very scared. Neville blurted out involuntarily, it was Draco. I met him in the clock tower. I was looking for Leaf and he cast a spell on me. After hearing Neville's words, Turnus did not stop and walked straight outside. Although the other Gryffindor students were a little angry about Draco's behavior, no one would do anything to Draco, the young master of the Malfoy family, for no reason. However, seeing Turnus walk out, his expression was still very bad. Some people who had nothing to do followed him and planned to see the excitement. Harry, Ronald and Hermione, who were friends of Turnus, knew that it was not good and hurriedly chased him out. They had been with Turnus for a while and had a certain understanding of Turnus's character. They knew that if nothing unexpected happened, Draco would suffer this time. They followed him not to help Turnus, but to stop Turnus at a critical moment to prevent Draco from being beaten too badly. Soon, a team led by Turners rushed downstairs. Turners finally found Draco in the Fountain Square. At this time, he was still proudly saying something to the people around him. Turner's ears were very sensitive, and he could hear something vaguely. Draco was telling the people around him about his previous, great achievements. This behavior made Turner's very angry. People from his Longbottom family were not bullied by everyone. Even if this person was from the Malfoy family, let alone he was a school director, what was so great about it, it seemed as if everyone was not. In fact, among the 28 pure blood families, most of them were school directors of Hogwarts. There were only a few people who did not become school directors, either because the inheritance was broken, or like Weasley, they were so poor that they could not even make ends meet. Seeing the Malfoy family insulting the descendants of the Longbottom family so wantonly, as a member of the Longbottom family, Trieste would never tolerate him. Immediately, he drew out his wand, and as he gently waved it, a spell flew out from it and hit Draco, who was feeling proud. Magic surge. This was not a powerful magic, at most it was just a gust of wind. This was not a spell that Turnus could not attack, he was just saying hello to Draco, 
he liked to cast spells on people, Turnus wanted to see how good Draco was. He didn't want others to say that he was a person who could only attack by surprise, and he didn't bother to do that. Turnus's greeting was successful, at least the person involved knew very well that someone was going to cause trouble for him. Draco turned around angrily and looked at the source of the magic surge. Just happened to meet Turnus's angry eyes. Seeing Turnus' appearance, Draco knew what was going on. Although he felt a little guilty, and through his study during this period, he occasionally took some courses with Gryffindor students. He had also heard that Turners had a strong talent for learning. However, as the next heir of the Malfoy family, how could he be a coward? Besides, there were his two followers and several Slytherin students around him, and he didn't believe that they would take action under such circumstances. But he obviously underestimated Turners' determination, and at the same time, he also underestimated Turners' strength. In Turners's opinion, what strength can these children have? Let alone them, in this school, as long as they are not more than fourth grade students, he is not afraid. With his current intermediate magician's magic reserves, and other magic, let alone these students, even those graduated wizards, he is sure that he can deal with them. Of course, he can't expose his magic that does not belong to this world here, but just the magic he has learned these days is enough for him to use. It's a complete crushing in terms of strength. Draco, you like to cast magic on other people, don't you? How about I be your opponent? Let me see how powerful you, the heir of the Malfoy family, are. You actually bully our Longbottom family. After hearing that Turnus upgraded this incident to the level of two families, Draco knew it was not good, but he had no way to escape. It was impossible to escape. This was related to the glory of the Malfoy family. Draco said disdainfully, Oh, then, let me see how powerful you are. Although he was a little scared in his heart, at least on the surface, in terms of momentum, he would never admit defeat. Are you ready, Draco? Turnus asked disdainfully. Draco had already drawn his wand, holding it tightly, looked at Turnus opposite, and nodded viciously, Okay. Come on. Stuck a stick in the front teeth. With that, he cast a spell without waiting for Turners or anyone else to start. Although it was suspected of a surprise attack, no one cared about it at this time. Turners had been prepared for this move. He had already prepared for it. A lot of magic power was condensed on the wand in his hand, and the spell was directly bounced out. This is not a profound spellcasting technique. It cannot bounce away a powerful spell like a duel between adult wizards. It is just a simple magic crushing, which forcibly bounces the magic through more abundant magic. To use this move, you need to have absolute magic crushing to do it. Without waiting for Draco to continue casting magic, Turner swung his wand, and a fist-sized magic ball flew towards Draco. This is not a magic, but a simple ball condensed by magic power. Although it has no special effect, it can achieve the purpose of physical attack and it will hurt. This is not a magic casting technique. At their current stage, when they don't know much magic, it is a very good way of attack. Of course, this has a premise, which is a strong enough magic control and a large enough magic. Draco naturally doesn't know any coping methods. Let's not talk about whether he has learned it now. Even if he knows it, many magics can't be used at all with his current magic reserves. He had no choice but to dodge to the side in a mess. Rolling on the ground, although it's not good looking and very embarrassing, it's better than being hit directly by such a magic ball. Turners didn't give Draco a chance at all. Before he could get up, another marble-sized magic ball was hit at Draco. At this time, the magic ball that Draco dodged had already fallen to the ground. There was only a bang, and the stone slabs on the ground made a dull sound because of this attack. It can be imagined what effect it would have if it hit the human body. This time, even Draco, who dodged it, had sweat on his forehead. He didn't dare to stop for a moment and continued to dodge those marble-sized magic balls. Although these magic balls were not as big as the previous ones, who knows if they would hurt when they hit him. He didn't want to try such an attack. In the end, everyone only saw that Draco was chased by many marbles and ran around, and his figure was very embarrassed. Turners had no intention of stopping at all and continued to attack with an expressionless face. In the end, Draco really had no choice. He was just a child and didn't have much physical strength. 
In addition, he was spoiled since childhood, so what physical strength did he have? At this time, he didn't care about his face, and shouted to Crab and Goyle on the side, what are you two still looking at there, come together and beat him. For such words, only boos from the people around would be welcomed. But as Draco's followers, Crab and Goyle didn't care about that. They immediately rolled up their sleeves and rushed towards Turner's. There were not many children of this age who knew magic. Even if they did, they could only perform those magic tricks, which had no lethality at all. On the contrary, it is better to use fists directly than to use a magic wand. When Draco was talking, Turnus was already on guard. Before Crab and Goyle did not take action, he did not plan to do anything. Now that they have joined the battlefield, Turnus does not need to be polite to them. The magic wand in his hand waved continuously, and a piece of magic marbles directly covered the three people. For a normal wizard, if he used magic power like this, the magic power would have been exhausted long ago. However, Turnus is obviously an exception. Let's not talk about other things. The magic power increase brought by the fairy fruit that Turnus ate when he was young has made him successfully reach the level of a primary magician. This is equivalent to the magic power reserve of a fourth or fifth grade student. In addition, in these years, he has been constantly replenishing his magic power, which has obviously increased much more than that of ordinary wizards. Now he is an intermediate wizard, and the magic power in his body is not far from some adult wizards with average talents, so he naturally does not worry about the problem of insufficient magic power. The magic marbles were thrown one after another, and Draco finally experienced the power of magic marbles. The marbles hit him one by one, just like being thrown by stones. Although there would be no substantial damage, it hurt him. Moreover, the huge number also made Draco and the other two feel numb. Finally, the three who could no longer bear it finally begged for mercy. There was no other way. If they continued to be beaten, they would become pigs. Just as Turner's was about to turn over them, a very gloomy voice suddenly came from outside the crowd. What happened here? Everyone was very familiar with the owner of this voice. It was the voice of their potion professor Snape, which was very low and depressed. When they heard this voice, everyone present knew that it was not good. Especially the students of Gryffindor College, they felt Snape's partiality the most deeply. As for the Slytherin students, they also felt bad, because they knew that their own dean was not so easy to talk to even to their own people. However, Draco, who was beaten in the field, seemed to have heard the sound of nature at this time. Because what others did not know was that Snape was Draco's godfather. In this country, a child's godfather is equivalent to another father of the child. Although not the biological father, he is better than the biological father. Although, sometimes Draco did not like the character of his godfather. But at this time, his godfather came, which was undoubtedly the sound of nature. When Turner's heard Snape's voice, he had already stopped the pace of attack. At this time, it was meaningless to hit Draco twice more. Instead, it would give Snape an excuse to punish Turner's more severely, which was completely unnecessary. The crowd soon parted, and Snape walked inside along the passage. When he saw the four people surrounded, he almost knew what had happened. He knew something about his godson's character, and he also knew Turnus, a very polite and studious student, whose only shortcoming was that he was a Gryffindor. Can anyone tell me what happened here? Although it was a question, it made people feel like an affirmative sentence. No one spoke for a while. Draco wanted to speak, but the scars on his body made him grimace and he couldn't stand the bruises for a while. Turnus looked at it, and finally did not let the atmosphere continue to solidify, and explained the whole story. After hearing Turnus' explanation, Snape turned his eyes to Draco. Although he wanted to lie, at this time, in public, he couldn't let go of his face, so he just nodded silently. When Snape heard that his godson was at fault, he always had an impulse to kill. What is this? Since you have provoked him, you should at least have enough strength. Without that strength, how can you find a sense of existence in his brother? Even if Snape has a clear intention to favor Slytherin, he can't go too far in this situation. Although he is the headmaster of Slytherin, don't forget that Professor McGonagall is still the headmaster of Gryffindor. And he is also the vice headmaster. What can you let him do? He is also desperate. In the end, Snape finally thought of a solution. 
Draco, Turnus is fighting privately in school. Depending on the circumstances, Gryffindor will be deducted 50 points, Slytherin will be deducted 50 points, and Turnus will be punished to patrol the Forbidden Forest. Then, without waiting for the people around to say anything, he directly took Draco away. The people around were a little indignant about Snape's punishment. You know, the Slytherin who just participated in the duel was not only Draco, but also Crabbe and Goyle. However, Snape was the dean after all, and he had a lot of prestige here, so no one dared to raise objections to him in person. But this last punishment was interesting. Turns remembered that in the original plot, the Forbidden Forest was not very peaceful. Now Snape asked Turns to go to the Forbidden Forest to accept the punishment. Even though it was just the beginning of the school year, Quirrell's body had not reached its limit at this time, and he did not need to replenish his vitality with unicorn blood. However, the Forbidden Forest was full of various unknowns, and there were many things there, and it was not as safe as imagined. Maybe Snape did not mean to harm Turns, but it was okay to make Turns suffer a little and scare him through the patrol punishment of the Forbidden Forest. Such a farce came to an end with Snape's intervention. However, after this incident, everyone knew the name of Turners. The Gryffindor students praised Turner's behavior of protecting his shortcomings, especially when the opponent was a student from Slytherin. Of course, while gaining the friendship of Gryffindor, he would naturally offend the students of Slytherin. This did not attract Turner's attention. Whether they hated him or not had nothing to do with him. In the following period of time, Turner's often received the admiring eyes of Gryffindor students. And in such eyes, although Turnas was very happy, it could not stop Snape from punishing Turnas. Three days after that incident, an owl threw a letter on his desk when he was having breakfast in the morning. Turnas opened it and took a look. It was written by Snape, asking him to go to Filch's office before 7 o'clock tonight, and Filch would lead him to find Hagrid to complete his punishment. When Turnas saw this, he did not care and put the letter in his hand aside casually. Turnas did not take this trip to the Forbidden Forest seriously. Although the Forbidden Forest is now full of dangers. But with Hagrid here, the danger is not that great. If it were an ordinary 11-year-old child, he might really be frightened and be frightened all night. But the problem is, Turnus is not like that. Not only is he not like that, he is also a person whose mental development has reached the level of an adult. In addition, he is very powerful. He really doesn't take the small forbidden forest seriously. On the other hand, Hermione and others, seeing Turnus's performance, couldn't help but say with some worry, Tennis, you are going to the forbidden forest tonight. I have read some books and inquired about it in the past two days. The environment there is very complicated, and there are a large number of magical creatures living in it. It is still very dangerous. You should prepare more. Looking at Hermione's worried face and the concerned eyes of others, Turnus smiled very easily and said, Okay, don't worry about it. I was punished this time, although it looks very dangerous. But don't you think about it, since the school can make such a punishment, Professor McGonagall did not stop it, doesn't this explain everything? There will be no danger, otherwise, the school can't bear such a big risk. Besides, isn't Hagrid still here? You have also seen his size, so strong, what creature can hurt me? After listening to Turnus' words, the others looked at each other, and they all thought that Turnus was right. Why didn't they think of it before? Hermione, who was standing by, also breathed a sigh of relief. She was indeed too worried before and didn't think of this. After listening to Turnus' explanation, they were no longer worried. By the way, Turnus, prepare more food for dinner tonight. Your punishment will last for a whole night. Don't go hungry then. After confirming that there was no danger, Hermione began to think about what she might encounter at night. Turnus nodded after hearing this. This was indeed something that needed to be paid attention to. Tonight was a long night, and it was indeed easy to get hungry if there was no food. Time soon came to the evening. Turnus had already prepared everything during dinner. Now that the time was almost up, he walked directly to Filch's office. This place is located in the underground floor, and there is no sunlight around, which makes the air here a little damp and moldy. The smell in the air is not very pleasant. In addition, I don't know if it is Filch's bad taste, the lights here are very few and it seems a little dim. In such an environment, there is no need to dress up at all, and it can be used directly as a haunted house. 
Turner's didn't care too much about it, and he didn't care about such an atmosphere at all. Soon, he came to Filch's office, where Filch had been waiting here early. After seeing Turner's arrive, Filch smiled grimly and said in a grim tone, You are here, so let's go, we will go to Hagrid now. It's a pity, if it was more than ten years ago, you wouldn't be so relaxed. Do you see the torture instruments here? I clean them every week. It's a pity that Dumbledore doesn't allow it, otherwise there won't be so many disobedient little wizards. Looking at Filch, Turner's ignored him and thought about going outside directly. Filch was also stunned when he saw Turner's action, and then a nameless fire was used in his chest. It has been a long time since he met such a little wizard who didn't take him seriously, especially a first-grade little wizard. This made him very angry. For a moment, he even thought about whether to use the punishment on the wall to hang the little wizard up and punish him first. However, in the end, he still couldn't do that, because he knew that after doing so, he would be in trouble. Although he was very indignant, he had no choice but to follow Turner's and walk out of the castle. At this time, Turner's had completely taken the dominant position. Rather than saying that Filch led him to find Hagrid, it would be better to say that he took Filch to find it. However, these are irrelevant things. He is now looking forward to what he will encounter in the Forbidden Forest tonight. In fact, the reason why he is not really worried about encountering danger in the Forbidden Forest is because of the fruit he ate when he was seven years old, the elf fruit. Through that fruit, he got a talent called natural affinity. He had tried this thing before, and it was very attractive to natural creatures. Whether it was those creatures with ferocious nature or those with gentle temperament, they could be very close to Turna's. Moreover, even those magical creatures with magic power in their bodies would be very close to Turna's. Although they were not as close as ordinary animals, they were not far away. So, in Turnus's opinion, this trip to the Forbidden Forest was like entering heaven. There were many magical creatures there that he was very envious of. The existence of these magical creatures is simply a treasure trove, and the magical materials on them are inexhaustible. As long as the amount of picking can be controlled, the materials in Turnus's hands can be imagined. Therefore, Turnus was not afraid of the trip to the Forbidden Forest, but looked forward to it. After leaving the castle, Turnus did not stop his steps and continued to walk in front, while Filch, who followed him, was more like a follower. He knew why Filch's attitude towards other little wizards was like this. Although he was more pitiful, it had nothing to do with Turnus. What Filch did in this academy would not be liked by the students of the academy, even Turnus was no exception. In this state, Turnus soon came to Hagrid's hut. Turnus had not been here before, but just took a look from a distance. Although he had a good relationship with Harry and the others before, it had only been a short time since the start of school, and they were all adapting to the new life in school before, and they had no time to come here to play. After arriving at Hagrid's hut, Filch spoke with a hoarse voice. Hagrid, I have sent you the bad student. I hope I can receive his whole body when I come tomorrow, ha 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 ha. Filch said, then smiled grimly and turned away. Turner's didn't care about this. Turner's didn't care about the perverted mind of Filch, the old squib. On the contrary, Hagrid, who opened the door and walked out, aroused Turner's interest. Although in the original book, Hagrid's life was indeed very poor, and he could only barely make ends meet. However, Turner's did not agree with this. Not to mention that Hagrid had the entire Forbidden Forest behind him, how many magical materials there were in it, and how much value it was. Just the venom that the eight-eyed giant spider Aragog and its offspring mentioned originally, those spiders can provide can achieve a very high yield. The current market price of the venom of the eight-eyed giant spider has reached 100 gold galleons per pint. Just think about the densely packed eight-eyed giant spiders, and you will know how valuable Brother High is. It's just that Hagrid, this fool, really doesn't know how to use his resources, so he lives in such poverty. It's like lying on a mountain of gold, eating steamed buns and drinking porridge all day. Hey Hagrid, are we going to start our patrol tonight now? Or should we wait for a while? He was very curious about what the steps of such an activity were, whether it was always going on, or just recently. Don't be so anxious, you are Harry's friend, I heard Harry talk about you, and he also talked about your feet this time. 
To be honest, I admire you very much, you can actually make the Malfoy kid lose his way. Hagrid obviously heard about Turner's feet, and his attitude towards him was very enthusiastic. For this big fool, as long as he is Harry's friend, he is also his friend. As for friends, Hagrid never hesitates to show his enthusiasm. Come on, come in first. It's still early. Let's go in and have a drink. The patrol tonight will last for a long time. If you don't eat something, you will be hungry easily. Hagrid opened the door of his stone house and let Turnas in. Turnas did not refuse and followed Hagrid in. Hagrid's room was in accordance with his own style, rough and wild, and looked very rough. However, in this small stone house, there is nothing missing, and everything here is good. Many ingredients are fresh wild ingredients picked from the Forbidden Forest, which are of great value. However, here, they seem so cheap, and many things cannot perfectly play their value, which feels like a waste of natural resources. And among them, there are some things that seem so precious. Turnas even saw some white long hairs woven into a rope to tie things up. If he was not mistaken, this should be the tail hair of a unicorn. This thing is a very precious magic material. It not only has a strong magic capacity, but also a high magic conductivity. Whether it is used to make magic patterns or as a magic prop to store magic power, it will be used on a large scale. But now, here, it is actually woven into ropes to tie things up. There are many such examples. After coming here, Turnus can truly understand how much benefit there is to rely on a place like the Forbidden Forest. That is, Hagrid is a fool. As long as a person is sane, he can basically make a fortune. For this, Turnus naturally cannot tolerate it. Hagrid, your rope is very unique. Turnus did not directly bring it up, but said it indirectly. Hagrid might be really stupid. He actually smiled innocently, scratched the back of his head, and said a little embarrassedly, this is made of some unicorn hair I collected from the Forbidden Forest. Although it looks a little ugly, it is really strong. Turners couldn't help it when he heard this. He rolled his eyes and looked at Brother High speechlessly. How is your life here? Do you need anything? Hagrid was a little embarrassed about Turner's question. To be honest, he had to make almost everything here except food. As for the materials, he didn't have to worry about it, after all, there was a whole forbidden forest. However, his own craftsmanship was really not very good, and he couldn't use magic openly, and his magic level was really not very good, which led to his life here being almost like a prehistoric primitive man. Of course, he lacked everything, but in this case, how could he have the nerve to tell others, not to mention that this person was a Gryffindor student. Seeing Hagrid being embarrassed to speak, Tennis could almost guess how he was doing here. He did not continue to talk about this topic, but went straight to the point and talked about the project he thought of that could generate income for Hagrid. Hagrid, have you ever thought that you are actually very rich? Hagrid was naturally confused by Turna's words. He really didn't know what Turna's was talking about. He could only scratch his head and ask stupidly, Turna's, what are you talking about? Turna's did not keep Hagrid in suspense. He took Hagrid's strong rope from the side and explained, Hagrid, I don't think you know that in the outside market, the value of just one unicorn tail hair is more than 10 gold galleons. Quote question mark question mark question mark quote. At this time, Hagrid, after hearing Turna's words, had several question marks on his head. Turna's did not wait for Hagrid to react, and took one from the rough looking crafts on the side. This thing looks like it is made of some canine teeth. Judging from its shape, it should be a shelf for placing things. If I am not mistaken, this should be the tooth of the three-headed dog of hell. Hagrid nodded hurriedly, as if you were right. Such a three-headed dog tooth is worth up to five gold galleons. Turners continued to explain to Hagrid. Hearing this, Hagrid finally understood that many of his inconspicuous things were worth so much. Then, Hagrid was excited. He really didn't expect that he could sell so many of these things for so much money outside. Doesn't that mean that if he sells all the things here, he can make a lot of money? Thinking of this, Hagrid got excited, and his face flushed. He looked at Turnus with a diligent face and said, Then Turnus, do you think these things of mine are really worth so much money? Can they really be sold? Although he didn't want to hit Hagrid, he still told the truth, it's not possible now. These things have not been specially processed. 
Now the magic power on them is seriously lost. They have lost their value. Now they are really just a piece of crafts. Hearing this, Hagrid could no longer hide his loss in his heart. A three-meter tall man almost shed tears. No one knows his life better than him. How poor he has lived for so many years. If he could not go to the Forbidden Forest from time to time, he would really be worse than a dog. Okay, don't be sad. Although these materials can't be sold as magic materials, their artistic value is still very high. Think about it. These are all made of precious magic materials, and their symbolic meaning is far greater than their artistic value. It was difficult for Hagrid to understand what was artistic value and what was symbolic meaning, but he did understand that these things could still be bought for some money, but they were not as expensive as before. After figuring this out, Hagrid immediately looked at Turnus with a face full of attentiveness, rubbing his hands and asking carefully, then can you help me sell them? Hee hee, you know, I'm short of everything except food. Looking at Hagrid's big face and the look of forced flattery, Turnus couldn't bear to continue watching, it was really a bit awkward. That's no problem, but as you know, for such a transaction, the seller needs to pay a certain commission. Although I can help you, my family also needs some funds to operate, so it is impossible for me to serve you for free. Turners did not hide anything and said it very directly. This is a matter of convention, and there is nothing worth hiding. Besides, the relationship between Turners and Hagrid is far from the point of free help. What's more, the transaction volume that can be achieved in such a business is very huge. Even in the end, Hagrid can't make the decision, but the headmaster of Hogwarts, Dumbledore, takes the lead. The products in the entire Forbidden Forest can be imagined to be rich, such a large output, and there are some very precious and even rare magic materials. If Hagrid is in control of it, then it goes without saying that in less than two years, Hagrid will be able to become a millionaire worth more than 10 million. Such a large fortune is not something that Hagrid can own. It's not that he doesn't have the ability. After all, if he wants to collect those things from here, Hagrid, the guard, will still be responsible. But with Hagrid's identity, half-giant, student who failed to graduate from Hogwarts, keykeeper, many people will not watch him take such a large fortune. Moreover, if Turner's guessed correctly, the funds for the activities of the Order of the Phoenix have been provided by Dumbledore over the years. And his source of funds is nothing more than the teaching funds issued by the Hogwarts Board of Directors. If Hagrid gets such a large fortune, let alone others, even Dumbledore will be jealous. Therefore, the two partners of this project may be Turners and Hagrid at the beginning. However, after the first month of the transaction is completed, when Hagrid sees a large amount of money entering his pocket, he will go to Dumbledore himself. Don't doubt it, with Hagrid's loyalty to Dumbledore, this is absolute. Moreover, he must know how difficult it is for Dumbledore to raise funds for the Order of the Phoenix. With Hagrid's personality, it would be fine if he didn't have the ability, but now that he has the ability, his simple and honest personality will not let him hide this matter. Hagrid nodded vigorously. He also knew this and didn't care much about these. In his heart, these things are just some of his daily utensils. If he can get some money from this, so that he has enough funds to buy some better daily necessities, it will be even better. That's no problem. You can deduct it as you like. As long as you can get some money, it doesn't need to be much. 100, no, 50 gold galleons will be fine. Hagrid said honestly. However, he felt a little embarrassed when he said the last part. His old face blushed and he asked uncertainly, well, can you get 50 gold galleons? If not, it doesn't matter. Facing a person like Hagrid, although sometimes you hate him to death, but after becoming friends with him, no one can hate him anymore. Turnus smiled and said with certainty, Hagrid, you underestimate the value of these things. If they are all sold, they can be sold for at least 5,000 gold galleons, and this is after deducting the handling fee. Minus my commission, the gold galleons in your hands will not be less than 4,000. Of course, my handling fee is indeed a bit high, but it is definitely valuable. After all, the connections required to sell these things are not as simple as imagined. I wonder if you think about it. Although he had roughly determined Hagrid's intention to sell, Turnus still asked Hagrid. When Hagrid heard that a sum of more than 4,000 gold galleons would be in his hands soon. The eyes of this half-blood giant were wide open. He didn't expect that one day he would have such a sum of money. 
Hagrid stood up suddenly, clapped his hands excitedly, and turned around in his hut, looking very excited. It was not until a long time later that Hagrid calmed down. Seeing that Ternas was still waiting for his answer, his face couldn't help but turn redder. Of course there is no problem, Ternas, you are really my good friend. Commissions and other things are not important, as long as you can get money, hee hee. Well, that's for sure, you just wait to collect the money when the time comes. Ternas was also very happy about this. This time, just by sending these things to the hands of the merchant, he was able to get so much money, and he was also very happy. Although he has been able to receive a huge amount of funds from time to time since he was eight years old. However, it should be understood that Turnus's capital consumption is also huge. The altar can indeed use very ordinary things, and when the character explodes, sacrifice to obtain some very good top quality products. However, such a probability is only a minority after all. If you want to obtain powerful props and skills, you can only obtain them by sacrificing things of equally high value. But the price of these things is sky high. To get them, the gold galleons that turn is paid can be imagined. Now, just by letting Hua Shuo run a trip, he can get thousands of gold galleons. He doesn't mind doing such a good thing. Well, turn is, why don't you take a look at what I have here? If you can sell it, you can take it. Anyway. These things are nothing to me. If you like it, just take it. After listening to Hagrid's words, Turnas nodded, then I'll take a look first and sort it out. Tomorrow, I'll ask Hua Shuo to go there once. I believe it won't take long to come back. Yeah, that's good, that's great. After that, Turnas searched everywhere in Hagrid's hut, and Hagrid followed behind him. Once Turnas found something valuable, Hagrid would be very happy, because these were all small coins. In the end, after more than an hour of hard work, more than 20 pieces of decorations were found. Among these things, a large part of them no longer had much magic power, so they could only be used as decorations. However, there are some individual things that can be used. And these things were bought by Turnas at 80% of the market price. Originally, Hagrid didn't want the money, but Turnas didn't agree. After all, in business, if he took these things for free, it would be like owing Hagrid a favor. He didn't need to owe anyone a favor for these things. The magic materials taken by Turnas alone are worth more than a thousand gold galleons. This made Hagrid, who was a little nervous, excited all of a sudden. Holding the leather bag of a thousand gold galleons in his hand, Hagrid was so happy that he even forgot that they had to go to the Forbidden Forest to patrol tonight. It was only with Turna's reminder that Hagrid remembered that they had to patrol the Forbidden Forest. Hagrid touched his head stupidly and put the money bag in the box on his bedside table a little embarrassedly. A stone crossbow and a pot of arrows were taken down from the wall. Turners, don't worry about anything. I am very familiar with this Forbidden Forest. Nothing here will hurt me. When the time comes, you just need to follow me and there will be no problem at all. Hagrid patted his chest and said confidently. Turnas had no doubt about this. Through the few words in the original book, Turnas could see that Hagrid was very popular in this forbidden forest. In other words, because he himself had the blood of this magical creature, giant, the creatures here would not regard him as an enemy. Although some races were not very friendly to him, they were not hostile to him. Although he knew this, looking at the homemade stone crossbow in Hagrid's hand, Turnus still felt a little unreliable. Perhaps only Hagrid could use this thing. Otherwise, with the crossbow arm of this stone crossbow, it would be impossible to pull it open without four or five people. However, it can be seen from here that Hagrid's life is not very good. Even the weapons he relies on for survival here can only be made by himself, and judging from the situation, he has become accustomed to this. But on the other hand, think about it, the most popular weapon on the market now is undoubtedly the magic wand, and few people use other weapons. In addition to this, there are also bows and arrows used by centaurs, but I think the bows and arrows they use are too weak for Hagrid and are not suitable at all. There are also some cold weapons used by giants and trolls. However, their not-so-smart brains say that the weapons they use are mostly stone sticks and wooden sticks, with a few big nails at most. Such weapons are obviously not suitable for Hagrid. So, in addition to making his own weapons, he can only find those craftsmen to help customize one. 
However, it was obvious from his previous situation that he didn't have the money. Hagrid, is this your weapon? Yes, it's inconspicuous, but it's very powerful. As long as there are dark creatures that want to hurt us, I can shoot them to death with one arrow. Hagrid was obviously used to it. He was not embarrassed or anything. Instead, he proudly introduced his weapon. How about this, Hagrid, I'll find someone to customize a weapon for you in a few days. In this way, your safety in the Forbidden Forest will also be guaranteed. It can be regarded as a symbol of our cooperation. Ternas thought about it. Such a weapon was nothing to Ternas and had no value at all. However, such a weapon could win Hagrid's favor. Sometimes, such subtle considerations can have a magical effect. Moreover, he could imagine that Hagrid would be his important partner for a long time to come. For such an important person, Ternas felt that it was still very valuable to make a certain investment. After hearing what Ternas said, Hagrid was slightly stunned. He had never felt treated like this by others. This touched him, who had always been very thick-skinned. In order to hide his emotions, Hagrid carried the crossbow on his back, took Yaya with him and thought about going outside. Okay, it's getting late, Ternas, let's go quickly. His tone was slightly choked, but because of his loud voice, it was difficult to hear clearly. Ternas didn't know that Hagrid didn't care about these things at this time. Instead, he put away the things in his hands and followed Hagrid into the Forbidden Forest. The Forbidden Forest is very large, with a very large area and a huge ecosystem inside, with its own operating system. As the guard of the Forbidden Forest, Hagrid has a natural ability to adapt to the rules here. And this time, he will also take Ternas to appreciate the beautiful scenery here. It has to be said that the Forbidden Forest in the Dark Night looks a bit eerie and scary. But this is just its surface, its inner part is still so magical. Most of the animals and plants here are magical creatures with magic. As soon as they entered the Forbidden Forest, Ternas took out a pair of goggles that looked a little strange. This set of goggles only consists of the part that protects the main eyes, which completely protects the eyes inside, and even the top and bottom are tightly fitted to the skin. Behind it are two long straps, which are used to fix the goggles, and the tightness can be adjusted according to the user. This goggles does not have many functions. In addition to protecting the eyes, it has only two effects. One of the effects is to amplify the glimmer particles at night, so that it can present images visible to the naked eye in the glimmer environment at night. In addition to this complete function, there is another function that is not very complete, because Turnus's alchemy skills are not strong enough and cannot be reproduced for the time being. This function is to detect the energy reaction of all objects within the site, that is, the magic reaction in the body. Such a function can clearly detect the magic content of each item. Of course, because this function is not very perfect, it can only detect the magic intensity reaction of about an intermediate magician. If it is higher, it will exceed the detection range of this instrument. And all objects with weak magic reactions cannot detect the magic fluctuations on them. In other words, this thing has a rough range of detection, and it will fail if it is too high or too low. However, in an environment like the Forbidden Forest, it is completely sufficient. When Turners put on this goggles, the surrounding environment was clear at a glance. Not only did he not have to worry about scratching his eyes with the branches around him, he also did not have to worry about tripping because the light was too dim. Very easily, Turners followed Hagrid's footsteps. The two of them kept patrolling in the Forbidden Forest. In fact, there was basically nothing to pay attention to when the two patrolled like this, that is, to pay attention to whether there were any dangerous magical creatures in the Forbidden Forest entering the range of Hogwarts. If there were, at dawn, other professors of the school would come here to deal with the situation here. After all, Hagrid was indeed very strong, but he could not be expected to do too many things. In the end, it still depended on the teachers in the school. Some creatures in the Forbidden Forest are still very powerful and dangerous. Hagrid is not strong enough to deal with such things. Of course, Hagrid can still handle most of the time. When the two of them were strolling here, they could see some magical creatures passing by them from time to time. Most of them were not very harmful. Because of Hagrid's existence, the magical creatures in the Forbidden Forest were not threatening on this line close to Hogwarts. And along the way, 
Turners also found some very good magic materials, most of which were herbs and animals. Because the magical creatures were not strong enough, he did not look down on the magic materials on them. In general, his harvest tonight was still very large. Hagrid was still very tolerant of his friend's affairs. Even if Turners would delay their trip, Hagrid did not care. Anyway, he did not have much work every day, only the work of patrolling the Forbidden Forest, and he had plenty of time to rest during the day. As for Turners, they had no classes tomorrow, which was Sunday, so there was no problem. As the two walked along, Turners introduced a lot of magical plants to Hagrid. Among them, Turners emphasized the ones with great value. Because, in the future, these picking tasks will be handed over to Hagrid. Hagrid was naturally very happy about this. This is a good thing for him to earn extra money. How could he refuse? However, Turners also reminded that some plants cannot be picked too frequently, otherwise, they will easily become extinct. But some plants can be picked continuously because their growth cycle is very short. Maybe, if you don't pick it today, it will wither when you come tomorrow. Moreover, Turners taught Hagrid the preservation methods of these magic plants. There are no strict requirements for the preservation of most magic plants. Besides, this is just the entrance to the Forbidden Forest. Even if it is a precious magic plant, it has been picked by Professor Snape and Sprout. How can it be their turn? The two of them walked slowly in the Forbidden Forest until more than three o'clock the next day, and basically completed their patrol work. At this point, Turner's punishment was also completed, and at the same time, Hagrid no longer needed to continue to follow the established route. In order to repay Turner's kindness, Hagrid planned to take Turner's to the depths of the Forbidden Forest. In the depths of the Forbidden Forest, there are more magical plants and animals, many of which are rarer and more uncommon than those outside. Maybe, if you are lucky, you can even see a unicorn. Hagrid said proudly. I saw a unicorn a few days ago. They are so beautiful. Hagrid smiled infatuatedly. That crazy smile made Turnus more curious about how charming the unicorn was. Turnus couldn't help but look forward to seeing the unicorn. Although he had seen the shadow of unicorns in the book, how could those living pictures show one ten thousandth of the unicorns? Not long after, under the leadership of Hagrid, the two of them came to the gathering place of the Thestrals, where many Thestrals lived. They not only live here, but also do some work for Hogwarts. They are also a kind of magical creatures raised by Hogwarts. Of course, they are at most free range. Hogwarts has not defined their living area, nor has it restricted their freedom. Except for the first year freshmen, all the carriages they took when they came to Hogwarts in the new semester were pulled by them. Under Hagrid's introduction, Turner saw the group of Night Thestrals here. These guys have good tempers. Although only those who have witnessed death can see them, they are shrouded in a mysterious veil. But in fact, these guys are unexpectedly friendly. When Hagrid arrived, they even greeted him enthusiastically. They approached Hagrid with their tall and thin bodies, rubbed their heads with him, and licked Hagrid's outstretched hand with their tongues. Of course, when they saw Turners, these guys were even more enthusiastic. Or maybe it was too much enthusiasm, all of them gathered around Turners, looking very close. In the end, they all even lay down beside Turners, looking up at him. When Hagrid saw these guys' performance, he was also shocked. Although he was very close to these guys, he had never been treated like this before. The meaning of such a Thestrals is very simple, that is, submission. This may not be rare in docile magical creatures like the Thestrals, and people often tame these magical creatures to be their companions. However, this situation seems a bit strange when it appears in the first appearance and the first encounter with them by Turnus. However, Hagrid doesn't care about these things. In the mind of this careless man, there are not many things that can make him take it to heart. Of course, the performance of the Thestrals this time is the same. Turnus understands that this should be the effect of his natural affinity, which can make natural creatures infinitely raise their goodwill towards him and reach a very high bottom. Unless he does something that seriously hurts these magical creatures, otherwise, their goodwill towards Turnus will always remain. After saying goodbye to the Thestrals, Hagrid took Turnus to continue walking deep into the Forbidden Forest. Not long after walking, they encountered a more dangerous magical creature, a creature called the Moon Wolf. 
they have silver white hair, which may not seem so magical now. However, when they appear on the night of the full moon, they are bathed in the moonlight. They will exude a very sacred aura, and at the same time, they are at their most powerful in that state. But very abnormally, the moon wolves in that state are the safest. Because, bathing in the moonlight, they will calm all the violent aura in their hearts, just like saints, without the desire to attack. And it is at this time that the hair of the moon wolves will be one of the important materials of the wolf poison potion. It is precisely because of this characteristic of the moon wolf that someone has developed a potion to calm the werewolf's killing desire and violent characteristics. However, the moon wolves at this time obviously do not have the sage mode of the full moon. When they found Hagrid and Turnus, they all had fierce eyes and wanted to attack. However, it seems that they are afraid of such a huge existence as Hagrid and did not act rashly. After all, even the largest wolf among them was only 1.5 meters tall, and only about 2.5 meters in length. Hagrid, who is 3 meters tall and at least 1 meter wide, was completely incomparable. However, they did not attack immediately, but they could no longer attack. Because, as they slowly approached, they gradually became aware of the existence of Tina's. At the beginning, they were not very sure, and they kept circling around suspiciously, sniffing something around with their sharp noses. In the end, they finally confirmed their doubts. One by one, they all raised their heads and looked at Tina's who was following Hagrid, the dangerous man. And Hagrid did not act rashly since he met these guys. Because he knew that as long as he did not take action, with his size, he might be able to deter these guys from their desire to eat. Once he starts to take action, I'm sorry, these guys will not show any mercy. They will never give up until they achieve their goal, which is the true portrayal of these moon wolves. Therefore, Hagrid now regretted that he should not have rashly brought Turnus to the depths of the Forbidden Forest. However, this could not be blamed on Hagrid, as he had not expected that these moon wolves living in the deeper part would actually appear here. This made him very helpless. Just when Hagrid was struggling over whether he should strike first, the performance of the moon wolves stunned Hagrid. It was seen that the moon wolves seemed to have noticed something and suddenly stopped and stayed where they were. And the encirclement that was about to be formed also had a gap. Such behavior undoubtedly gave up the pace of attack. If it was just like this, it would not be a big deal. Maybe they took into account the existence of Hagrid, a behemoth, and now it was not winter, so there was no shortage of food, so they gave up the hunting action this time. However, their next action stunned Hagrid. All of a sudden, all the moon wolves crawled to the ground. Not only did they lie prone with their front limbs, preparing to bite and accumulate strength, but they lay completely on the ground, and even their hind limbs were bent and lying on the ground. Such behavior undoubtedly means giving up the hunting action. If they just gave up the hunting this time, it would be nothing, but they completely gave up the attack. This is a bit unreasonable. This doesn't make sense. What's wrong with them? Hagrid's mind is now a mess, and he doesn't know what to do. Turnus has some understanding. These moon wolves should have a great liking for Turnus because of his natural affinity. Under this liking, they all gave up attacking Turnus, and at the same time, they also had the intention of submitting to Turnus. Such behavior is a bit incredible, but if you think about it carefully, Turnus's talent comes from the fruit of the Tree of Life. The existence of the Tree of Life is a very sacred existence compared to everything in nature. It can even be said that its existence is the mother of all things in nature. With such a talent, it is easier to understand why Turnus is favored by these magical creatures. Turnus did not care about Hagrid's stunned look at this time, but curiously came to the side of these moon wolves. Among this group of moon wolves, there is a wolf that is obviously much larger than the other moon wolves. It should be the leader of these moon wolves. When Turnus came to the wolf king, the wolf king did not show any uneasiness, but was very happy, as if it was a very happy thing to be able to get close to Turnus. Turnus came to the wolf king, stretched out his hand, and gently stroked the wolf king's head. Just like treating his snow, but the size of the one in front of him is obviously much bigger. Speaking of which, Turnus also missed Snow a little. Unfortunately, his mother and grandmother at home did not let him bring Snow to school, saying that he was just in the first grade and did not have so much time to take care of Snow, which would make it suffer. God have mercy on him. 
When he came to school, no one at home worried whether he would be wronged in Hogwarts. They actually thought about the feelings of a cat. Turnus really wanted to thank them for snow. Gnashing teeth. And when Turnus touched it, the Wolf King did not feel anything strange and enjoyed it very much. After touching the Wolf King for a while, Turnus patted its head and let it leave here. Although the hair of the Moon Wolf is the main material of the Wolf Poison Potion, and it is very precious and rare. But that has to wait until the full moon. Now their hair has no use value at all. Maybe there will be in the future, but obviously, Tinas doesn't have the time to study the function of their hair now. After receiving Tennis's order, the Wolf King left here although he was a little reluctant. He also knew that Tinas would not leave with him, so he could only say goodbye to Tinas reluctantly, hoping to meet again in the future. It was not until more than ten minutes later that the Wolf Pack, led by the Wolf King, left Tennis's sight with a look back every three steps. At this time, Hagrid finally came back to his senses and looked at Tinas with some surprise, as if he was looking at some rare treasures. As for the night thestrals just now, it can be said that they have developed a great affection because of their frequent contact with humans. However, this group of moon wolves is obviously not like this. They even wanted to attack them at the beginning. What was the reason in the end that made them change their decision and get closer to Tina's instead? Not only did it not attack them, it even let Turnus touch its head. This is a very intimate action among animals. With such a foundation, it is very easy to take the team led by the Wolf King and leave here, or even follow him. At this time, Hagrid didn't know that if Turnus hadn't been bothered, he would have been able to get the followers of the group of Moon Wolves just now. But just realizing what is shown now is enough to shock. Hagrid, do we still need to go inside? Are there any magical creatures inside? Turnus' voice interrupted Hagrid's doubtful thoughts about life. After Hagrid pondered for a while, he finally thought of something and said excitedly, we can also go to Unicorn Bend, where there may be unicorns. Unicorn Bend. What is that place? Turnus was very confused. Is there such a place in this forbidden forest? Hey, I named that place. It didn't have a name originally, but the terrain there looks like a bend, and I've seen unicorns there more than once, so I named it that way. I don't know if there are unicorns there now, but the probability of them existing is still very high. Hagrid smiled innocently and said a little embarrassedly. I see, let's go quickly then. As he said that, Turners began to urge them. Turners was still very curious about unicorns. But the result was disappointing. When they arrived at the unicorn bend, there were indeed some hoof prints there, but there was no unicorn. This disappointed Turners, who was full of expectations. In the end, the two successfully returned to Hagrid's hut before dawn. After returning to the hut, Turnus put all the handicrafts that had been sorted out here into a dragon skin bag. With a whistle, Washuo flew to Turnus' arm. After Turnus gave Washuo a few words, Washuo spread his wings and flew away, heading to the place where these goods were sold. Hagrid looked at Washuo flying away, full of expectations, obviously looking forward to how much money this time's goods could bring him. To be honest, Hagrid is actually very satisfied now. Just last night, he had already obtained more than a thousand gold galleons, which was a huge sum of money for him. But who would complain about having too much money? Hagrid is naturally looking forward to having more gold galleons. Turnus didn't pay attention to Hagrid's situation anymore. He was so sleepy now that he had to rest, otherwise he would have no energy for the whole day. After returning to the dormitory, he cast an ear-blocking spell on himself in advance, put on an eye mask, and fell into a deep sleep. When he opened his eyes again, the sun was gradually setting. What time is it now? Turnus muttered as he took off the eye mask and raised his wrist to check the time. You don't know until you see it, and you're shocked. It's already past three in the afternoon. In other words, he has been sleeping since seven in the morning, and most of the day has passed in bed. Turnus rubbed his sleepy eyes, got up and went to the bathroom to wash up. When he left the lounge, he saw that Hermione was sitting in the common room, reading a book. Turnus came to Hermione, patted her shoulder gently, and greeted her. You're up, have something to eat. These are what I packed at noon. I used a heat preservation spell, but it probably didn't control it well. It's still a little cold now. Just eat a little to fill your stomach, and then have a good meal at dinner. 
Hermione saw that it was Turnus, and quickly took out the boxes of food in her dragon skin bag. She could feel a little bit of temperature when she touched the box. However, it was indeed a little cold as how Min said. But what does it matter? This still can't stop a girl's feelings for you. It doesn't matter, thanks to you, otherwise I would be hungry. By the way, what book are you reading? Turnus picked up the lunch box, opened it, and started to eat it without caring whether it was hot or not. Hermione looked at Turnus who didn't dislike him, smiled slightly, then raised the book in his hand, and said with some sadness, next Thursday, we have a flying class. I have never used a flying broom, I am worried that there will be any accidents, so I will read these related books first, so that I can be mentally prepared. Obviously, Hermione is not very good at this, or in other words, she is not very good at sports. One important point is that Hermione seems to be a little afraid of heights from the performance in the original book. Of course, these problems are not big. Most of the problems of fear of heights are psychological. As long as they can be overcome, they are easy to solve. As for not being good at it, you will be good at it if you play more, right? Okay. Don't worry, these problems are easy to solve. I will take you to a place later, and you will definitely have no problems then. Turnus said to Hermione while eating. Although she was a little confused about what Turnus wanted to do, Hermione didn't ask much when she heard that it would help her. She just nodded and started reading again. After Turnus ate all the food in the box in his hand, he washed the box and put it away. Then he took Hermione out of Hogwarts Castle. After the two of them walked out of the castle hand in hand, they came to Hagrid's hut. But they didn't go to find Hagrid, but followed a path to the gathering place of the Thestrals where they had been last night. Here, the Thestrals had gone out to look for food, and only a few of them stayed here, but they were all wandering around in this open space in groups of three or two. When they sensed that Turnus was coming, all the Thestrals in this area excitedly gathered towards Turnus. Hermione seemed to have never seen the process of death with her own eyes, so she couldn't see the existence of these Thestrals. However, she could see from the traces of the grass being pressed on the ground around her that there should be a group of creatures that she couldn't see. This made Hermione very panicked. This was the first time she encountered such a situation, and she was a little at a loss. Turners could clearly feel Hermione's nervousness and uneasiness. He took Hermione's hand and comforted her softly. Don't worry, these are Thestrals. They are very docile magical creatures. Although they cannot be seen by people who have not faced death, wizards regard them as ominous. But in fact, these creatures are very docile. They are about the same size as horses, but much thinner, and have a pair of wings. Their load-bearing capacity is very strong. Turners said, holding Hermione's hand, slowly leading Hermione to touch the face of the Thestral in front of them. Because of Turner's presence, this Thestral seemed very well behaved and obedient, and let Hermione touch it without moving. At the beginning, Hermione was indeed a little worried, worried that this invisible magical creature would suddenly attack her. But soon, she found that these creatures were indeed very docile and well behaved as Turner said. Gradually, Hermione became more courageous and began to explore slowly, figuring out the general image of the Thestrals. It had two horns on its head, a very thin body, almost bones could be felt, a pair of bat wings on its back, and a long and powerful tail. After figuring out the general image, Hermione gradually stopped being afraid, and instead began to study them with interest. After Hermione gradually got used to getting along with the Thestrals, Turnus made another suggestion, Hermione, why don't we take the Thestrals and fly around in the sky? When Hermione heard Turnus's suggestion, she shook her head instinctively, obviously very resistant to this suggestion. No, forget it, let's go back. It's getting late now. We might just catch up with dinner time if we go back. This sounds like an excuse. It's only about 4.30 now, and dinner starts at more than 6 o'clock. Turnus brought her out this time just to help her overcome her fear of heights, so how could he let her go now? Immediately, Turnus didn't waste words. Anyway, no matter what he said, Hermione would not agree. It's better to go all out and pull her up directly. Thinking of this, Turnus didn't hesitate and directly pulled Hermione's hand and pulled her to the side of a Thestral. The Thestrals understood what Turnus meant and lay down on the ground obediently, making it easier for Turnus to sit on them. Although Hermione struggled again and again, how could she resist Turnus' pull? 
In the end, Ternas pulled her onto the Thestral's back. Before Hermione could react, the Thestral's under them all stood up. This scared Hermione, and she couldn't help but hold Turna's arms tightly. Turna's didn't let the Thestrals fly up to the sky immediately, but let Hermione get used to it first, otherwise it would be even worse in the sky. Gradually, after the Thestrals stopped moving, Hermione gradually calmed down. She slowly opened her eyes and looked down. At this time, the two of them were flying in the air very magically. Indeed, in Hermione's eyes, the two of them were flying in the air. Because at this time, she could not see the Thestrals, she could only see them. At first, Hermione was a little uncomfortable, but gradually, she began to get used to this height. After all, to be honest, this height is not that high. After adapting to this height, Turners began to slowly move the Thestrals, allowing Hermione to gradually adapt to this feeling. At this time, Hermione could only see the two of them, floating in the air so magically. She felt very novel about this, and this novelty successfully overwhelmed her fear of heights. Slowly, Hermione also relaxed. Indeed, if it was just like this, there was nothing scary, and Hermione could still accept it. Hermione, let's let the Thestrals run first, how about it? Turner's suggested behind Hermione. Although Hermione was a little scared, at the same time, she had some faint expectations. She wanted to feel what it would be like to ride an invisible Thestral. After hesitating for a moment, Hermione finally nodded in agreement under Turnus's expectant gaze. Turnus was very happy. As long as there was this beginning, Hermione would be able to gradually overcome her fear of heights. Turnus did not let the Thestrals run very fast, but just ran slowly in that open space, turning around here, carrying the two of them for a leisurely jog. Gradually, Hermione began to like the feeling of her body constantly rising and falling with the running of the Thestrals. After running for a while, Turnus began to gradually speed up, and the speed of the Thestrals gradually increased. When it reached a certain point, the wings of the Thestrals began to flap. This movement, of course, could not be hidden from Hermione. After seeing that she was getting farther and farther away from the ground, Hermione suddenly became nervous. He quickly grabbed Turna's arm, and said in a crying tone with fear, Turna's, make it stop, don't fly anymore, I'm scared. This is the first time Turna's has seen Hermione like this. To be honest, this kind of Hermione is very touching. However, this time, Turna's was originally going to help Hermione overcome her fear of heights, so it was naturally impossible for him to let the Thestral land. He gently hugged Hermione and comforted her softly in her ear. In Turnus's gentle comfort, Hermione's emotions gradually began to calm down. Among them, not only was there the effect of Turnus's comfort, but the most important thing was actually a very special skill of Turnus that played a role. This is a skill that Turnus got during a sacrifice. Its function is very simple, that is, it can soothe people's emotions and contact people's negative effects. However, the level of this skill is a bit low, and it can only work on people's negative emotions. It can only play a soothing role, cannot heal people's minds, and cannot contact spiritual and curse-type magic damage. So relatively speaking, it was a bit useless. After getting this ability, Turnus basically didn't use it much. I didn't expect that it would be used on Hermione today. This can be regarded as a great achievement. Gradually, under the influence of Turnus's words and the effect of his skills, Hermione's emotions calmed down. However, at the beginning, Hermione still didn't dare to look down, but hid in Turnus' arms very timidly, feeling the strong wind blowing on her face, blowing across her cheeks, and the strong wind made her and Turnus's robes rustle. Of course, this situation was gradually getting better, until a certain moment, Hermione finally plucked up the courage, secretly leaked one eye, and looked at the surrounding scenery. When she saw the green scenery below them and the misty sunset next to them, Hermione was immediately attracted by this beautiful scenery, and no longer hid in Turnus's arms, but looked at the surrounding scenery very curiously. Looking left and right, she had gradually gotten rid of her fear of heights. Looking at Hermione who was curiously looking around, Turnus finally breathed a sigh of relief. He had finally helped Hermione overcome her fear of heights. In the following time, the two of them naturally flew freely in the boundless sky. When they came back, it was already a quarter after six. At this time, the dinner time at Hogwarts had already begun. 
It's bad, Turnus, we're going to be late. You didn't eat much at noon today. If you miss it again, it will be bad. Let's go quickly. As she said that, Hermione reached out and took Turnus' hand, and ran towards the castle. Turnus, who was following behind Hermione, saw Hermione take the initiative to take his hand, and couldn't help but smile knowingly, and just let Hermione pull him towards the castle. Hermione, don't be too anxious, we should be able to catch up, don't fall. Turnus said with concern from behind. Since this close contact, the relationship between Hermione and Turnus has become closer than before. And both of them are academic masters and have many common topics. Because of Turnus, the relationship between Harry and Hermione is currently just between ordinary friends and good friends. Ronald no longer has the jealousy of Hermione's popularity and good academic performance. He really can't be jealous. Let alone Hermione, who is able to crush the level of everyone in the grade without any help. Now with the help of Turnus, she is even more powerful, and her learning progress is rising. Compared with the original plot, she is more outstanding and more excellent. And Turnus, who has been helping Hermione all the time, is not a tyrant at all, but a god of learning. Any knowledge can be quickly integrated, and it can be fully mastered after practicing it once or twice, and it can be familiar with it after practicing it a few more times. Such an existence is not something that people can envy at all. Besides, even if they are jealous, no one will gossip behind their backs, because they don't have the courage. Turnus's record is still widely circulated in the school. Such a fighting maniac, how can ordinary people go back and provoke him without thinking? As for those who have the strength to provoke, at least in their own opinion, those who have the strength do not have such reasons and opportunities. Only the senior students are stronger than Turners, and they don't have so many opportunities to come into contact with Turners. Then there are the professors who teach them in the college. They are indeed powerful and often come into contact with Turners, but the relationship between professors and students is more of a teacher-student relationship. They don't care about a student's strong talent. On the contrary, the stronger the student's talent, it is a good thing for them to teach a strong student. With Turner's existence, Hermione can stay here easily. After all, everyone knows that Turner's is very protective of his friends. So naturally, no one will be blind and provoke Turner's friends. Didn't you see that Draco from Slytherin was knocked down by Turner's on the spot and severely taught a lesson after provoking Neville again? Time flies, and soon it is time for their first flying class. This time, Hermione was no longer nervous. Instead, she was very much looking forward to the opportunity to ride her broom and fly in the sky. She couldn't wait to go to class. On the morning of this day, during breakfast, all the high-end handicrafts that Turner's helped Hagrid sell had been sold. The final harvest of gold galleons was more than 7,500 gold galleons, of which Turner's would deduct 20% of the handling fee, which was 1,500 gold galleons. The remaining 6,000 gold galleons would be Hagrid's income. Turner's took advantage of the lunch break, after class, to go to Hagrid's cabin and give him the money. Soon, the class time came. This flying class was for Gryffindor and Slytherin together, which meant that they would meet Draco and his gang again. Since being taught a lesson by Turner's last time, Draco dared not tease Neville again. However, he did not stop, but turned his target to Harry and Ronald. The relationship between the two was not peaceful to begin with, and they had a fight on the Hogwarts Express before, so the relationship between the two sides has become increasingly tense in recent times. Turnus did not interfere too much in this matter. The relationship between Gryffindor and Slytherin was already very tense. Turnus's previous intervention could be said to be for Neville. However, if he continued to interfere in the fight between the two colleges, it would be a bit unreasonable. Maybe, next time it would not be the first-year students who would trouble Turnus, but the older students. Because Turnus's strength was really beyond the scope, and in his eyes it affected the competition between Slytherin and Gryffindor. The seniors of Gryffindor were naturally happy to see it happen, and were happy to see the joke. But the Slytherins would not just watch. If Turnus interfered too much, they would be targeted by them. That's right, Turnus's strength has been recognized by those senior students. They have put Turnus on the same level as them. But it is precisely because of this that the seniors of Slytherin do not want to see Slytherin always under the shadow of Gryffindor, 
so they can only shamelessly bully the weak once and not allow turners to intervene in the competition between the two colleges again. Although they are reluctant to admit it, they have to say that Slytherin still has a deep foundation. The strength of Slytherin senior students is generally stronger than that of students from other colleges. This is not because the education received by Slytherin students is much stronger than that of students from other colleges. It is caused by many factors. The first point is that Slytherin students generally come from pure blood families with a long history. Which of these families is not long-standing? How can they not have two brushes? As they grow older, they have gradually begun to receive the advanced magical knowledge inherited from their families. This gives them an innate advantage. Although the students of other students can also continue to grow through their own efforts. But what does this count for compared to the accumulation of a family? Of course, there are descendants of pure blood families in other colleges, and it is these people who prevent Slytherin from having the power to dominate alone and only have a slight advantage. In addition to the inheritance of magic, there is another point that is also very important. That is, which of these pure blood families does not have huge family assets? With such huge resource support, even a wizard with poor talent can be turned into a master. But what about wizards from other ordinary families? Only those with strong talents can keep up with these people. Others with slightly stronger or equal talents can only helplessly watch the backs of these people and be eliminated. This is the fact, very cruel, but so realistic. Of course, Turners does not need to worry about this. As one of the few pure blood descendants who did not enter Slytherin, he will also take on the responsibility of supporting the lower grade Gryffindor students and fighting against Slytherin after growing up. However, because his existence really disrupted the balance, Slytherin was very tough in dealing with him, which forced the senior students of the other three colleges to compromise and acquiesce in Slytherin's decision. Of course, they could also resist, but the cost was a bit high. Even if they were to fight against three colleges at the same time, the nature of Slytherin determined the strength of their high-level combat power. Once the relationship was really torn, not to mention the senior students, even the students who had graduated. They would be invaded by Slytherin, and the already fragile balance would be broken again. This was something that the wizards from Muggle families would never allow. This wizarding world was not friendly to them. If the little living space they had was eroded, their living environment would become even more urgent. In fact, more than 10 years ago, pure blood wizards launched a revenge operation against wizards from Muggle families. That's right, it was the Voldemort incident. Perhaps, the main factors in the Voldemort incident were Voldemort's ambition and his strong strength. However, it cannot be denied that this was something that the pure blood families tried their best to promote. It was just that in the end, Voldemort's strength had exceeded the control of the pure blood families, forcing them to obey Voldemort's rule. Of course, in the wizarding world, there are not only pure blood wizards like Slytherin, but also several other families who are fighting against these bloodline advocates. The most famous of them are naturally the Weasley and Longbottom families. They don't take their own bloodline that seriously. Moreover, they sneer at the pure blood theory of those who come from Slytherin College. It is with their support that more people can receive wizard education, thereby continuously expanding the number of wizards. In fact, only in this way can the wizarding world become more prosperous and powerful. This is something that only a few people who really see through the essence of things can understand. Therefore, besides studying every day, Turnus rarely participates in the confrontation between Gryffindor and Slytherin. Moreover, Turnus also feels that such behavior is too childish. After all, this is a school, a place for learning. Although this is also a reflection of a magical society, the role it can play is still too small and cannot play a decisive role. Those who can really determine the direction of society are always those people in the upper class. They hold the right to speak in this world, not the students of Hogwarts. At most, they are just playing house, imitating the society of adults for their own face. Of course, compromise is compromise, but when it is time to be cowardly, Draco is still very tactful. He understands that even with the pressure of the senior Slytherin, Turnus cannot act arbitrarily. However, if he really takes the initiative to provoke, then what should be done, and Turnus will not have the slightest burden to beat him at that time. So, in this class, Draco was surprisingly well behaved.
No, or rather, as long as he was in the class with Gryffindor, except for the potions class where Snape was suppressing him, Draco was very sensible. This time, there was no special situation. After all, Neville was not the same as in the original plot. At this time, Neville still had a bad memory due to the forgetfulness spell and looked a little stupid. However, with Turner's, Neville developed very well in other aspects except memory. Not only was his physical fitness excellent, but his magic power also increased far beyond the level of ordinary peers. Besides, Neville often played with the flying broom at home. With Turner's guidance, Neville's flying skills were still very high. It can be said that Turner's existence completely changed Neville. There would naturally be no tragedy of magic out of control, causing the flying broom to run around everywhere. As for Hermione, her performance this time was also very good, and she was able to control the flying broom to fly freely. In general, everyone performed normally in this flying class, and there were no problems. This also made Mrs. Hooch, who was worried, feel relieved. For those who have just come into contact with flying brooms, especially those who have underdeveloped motor nerves or are afraid of heights, this will be a very big challenge. However, in this flying class, Mrs. Hooch also found several good seedlings who can join their respective Quidditch teams. This is also one of her jobs, recommending new players to the student team. Of course, this is just a recommendation. Whether to adopt it or not depends on the captain of each college. Moreover, that will be after the second year. Before that, they have no hope of joining, unless they are very outstanding and can make an exception for the college, otherwise there is basically no chance. This has never happened in the history of Hogwarts. Of course, because there were no accidents this time, Harry was not able to join the Gryffindor Quidditch team as early as he had originally wanted. Of course, this problem is not a big deal. Even if Harry did not appear, the Gryffindor Quidditch team would still be full of members. It's just that without Harry, I don't know if they can win the Gryffindor College Cup this time. For a long time afterwards, the days were spent in busy study. As for the cooperation with Hagrid, it was also going on as scheduled. Every month, Hagrid could get a large sum of gold galleons. This is a large sum, not just an ordinary large sum, but more than 100,000 gold galleons. Such a large sum of money, Hagrid was stunned when he got his share in the local month. He did get a lot of money before, more than 8,000 gold galleons. However, the number of gold galleons this time was really a bit large, reaching more than 100,000 gold galleons. Such a large sum of money, when Hagrid got it, he felt like he was dreaming. After waking up, Hagrid rushed to Dumbledore's lounge with his hands shaking, grabbing the dragon skin bag. There, Hagrid told Dumbledore about his cooperation with Turner's from beginning to end. He told Dumbledore everything without hiding anything, and only after he finished did Hagrid breathe a sigh of relief. To be honest, it was also Hagrid's character that such a large sum of money came into his hands for no reason. No, it can't be said to be for no reason, but he just did some physical labor collecting magical materials from magical plants and magical creatures. But in his opinion, it was just a matter of moving his hands, but he received a full 100,000 gold galleons. Such a good thing, to be honest, Hagrid was a little panicked, and his straight brain still couldn't figure out this problem. However, after Dumbledore heard about Hagrid's experience and the cooperation reached with Turner's, he understood it. This is indeed a very promising project. You know, they had never thought of using the resources in the Forbidden Forest before. Basically, anyone who wants something there can take it, and no one goes back to manage it. Although Hogwarts has a natural advantage with the Forbidden Forest behind it, they have never thought of using it. First, they didn't think of this, and second, the Forbidden Forest was not private, so they didn't think of using the Forbidden Forest to make profits. However, this project is indeed a very profitable project. And it is almost cost-free, only some human resources are needed, which is undoubtedly very good news for Dumbledore who is in urgent need of money. After thinking carefully, Dumbledore asked Hagrid to call Turner's to his office. Hagrid didn't say much and went out directly. When he found Turner's, Hagrid was still a little ashamed. In his opinion, Dumbledore wanted to terminate this cooperation. After all, his brain was not enough for Dumbledore, so how could he guess Dumbledore's thoughts? 
This is just him, his brain is not very good, and he thought Dumbledore wanted to reject this kind of cooperation from Turner's. But what is the truth? When Turner's came to Dumbledore's office, Dumbledore had already prepared a set of refreshments, obviously showing his good intentions. This is a big customer. Of course, he has to treat him well, otherwise, the fixed income of more than 100,000 gold coins a month will be gone. When Turner's came in, Dumbledore welcomed Turner's to the guest sofa with a smile on his face. Mr. Turner's, this summons may be a bit presumptuous, please forgive me. Dumbledore was very polite. After all, he was a big money sponsor, and he still had to give him the respect he deserved. You are polite, Principal Dumbledore, it is my honor that you can summon me. Turner's etiquette was very good, and he basically understood Dumbledore's attitude, so he naturally gave him face. Not only because of his identity, but also because of his strength, he deserves this respect. Turner sat on the sofa and took a sip of the black tea in front of him. There is nothing to worry about, as for magic potions such as truth serum. Turner's didn't take it to heart at all. It's not that he is heartless. He didn't put the original world, those fan fictions, in Dumbledore's office, everything has truth serum or something. This is simply nonsense. Let's not talk about you, a little kid, even if you are more mature, stronger, and have more outstanding potential. What's the matter, no matter what, you are just a child. He is the most powerful white wizard, but let's not talk about his strength, at least his identity is there, as for a possibility, he will use truth serum on you. Let's not talk about whether it will happen, let's ask whether you are worthy of it. Accompanying a great wizard, he is here to intrigue with you. If Dumbledore is really such a person, then he doesn't deserve his current status and strength. Indeed, among powerful people, there are some people with bad intentions and narrow minds. However, there must be some truths that those who have achieved great things since ancient times are not willing to give into small matters. How perverted must a person be if he is narrow-minded enough to deal with a student? Even if such a person can be proud for a while, it will not last long. Therefore, Turnus has no worries at all. Besides, even if there is such a thing, Turnus has other ways to deal with it. If there is something wrong, it is still okay to use his last resort. However, such a method can only be used once. If it is used in such a small scene, it seems a bit wasteful. After seeing Turnus's attitude, Dumbledore smiled slightly and felt relieved. Before this, he was actually a little worried that Turnus would complain about Hagrid and himself because of his childish nature. However, looking at the situation now, there should be no problem, and he also began to pay attention to Turnus. For an 11-year-old child to have such a mentality is enough to show that he has unlimited potential. Mr. Turners, I won't keep you in suspense today. I have something to say. Dumbledore said to Turners with a smile. Principal Dumbledore, please go ahead. I'm listening. Turners put down his teacup and listened attentively. Dumbledore was naturally very satisfied with this. You also know that our school has always been short of funds. It can be described as not making enough money. If it weren't for the support of the school directors, our school would not be able to open. Turners nodded, which means he agreed. He knew this. Every year, the Longbottom family will inject a sum of about 100,000 gold galleons into Hogwarts to ensure the operation of Hogwarts. Not only the Longbottom family, but also more than a dozen other families of directors will do the same. Of course, the funds will definitely not be 100,000 gold coins. Such a large sum of money is not something that every family can afford, and it is still 100,000 per year. So, Hagrid came to me before and talked about your cooperation. I hope you don't blame Hagrid for this. Hagrid is a straightforward person. He did lose his composure in such a big deal. Please forgive me. Speaking of this, Turnus really didn't care much. His original intention was to cooperate with Dumbledore, but because he didn't have such a big weight before and couldn't find Dumbledore, he retreated to Hagrid. It doesn't matter. This is not a shameful deal. I don't care. Turnus nodded slightly, indicating that he didn't care. Dumbledore was relieved after getting a definite answer. In fact, it's not just Turnus who is worried. Dumbledore can't see the benefits in this regard and won't cooperate with him. He is also worried that Turnus will not cooperate with them because of Hagrid's leak. 
Don't look at the profit of 100,000 gold galleons this month, this number is not much. However, this is not much, and it is also relative to those big families. For Hogwarts, no, it should be said that for Dumbledore, this is already a very huge amount of money. If some misunderstandings lead to the termination of cooperation, he will also be very troubled. After all, he is not only the headmaster of Hogwarts, but also the president of the Order of the Phoenix. Although this organization dedicated to fighting Voldemort and his power, the Death Eaters, has few members, the funds needed every day are very tight. Not only does it require a lot of money to buy supplies, but it also needs to appease and comfort those who have sacrificed. All these kinds of consumption are huge outflows of funds. This makes a great wizard have to tighten his belt every day, and sometimes even have to pay some materials from his pet fox in exchange for part of the funds. Therefore, Dumbledore is still very tight on hand. Actually, this time, I want to talk to you about your previous cooperation with Hagrid. Of course, I am not against this cooperation, but I want to change the cooperation between the Longbottom family and Hogwarts. What Dumbledore said was within Turner's expectations, but also beyond Turner's expectations. As expected, this cooperation will continue as he thought. But what surprised him was that Dumbledore actually represented Hogwarts to cooperate with the Longbottom family. This has a very different meaning. If only Dumbledore cooperated with their family, then the final profit would not have anything to do with Hogwarts. Such benefits are naturally needless to say. Not only can a large amount of funds be obtained from the school board every year to develop Hogwarts. Moreover, the profits from this cooperation will naturally go into Dumbledore's pocket. In this way, he will have more funds, which can not only be used to develop Hogwarts, but also to develop the Order of the Phoenix. However, now it is very different. Once Hogwarts has its own source of funds, the funds obtained from the board of directors will be greatly discounted, or even no financial support. This will not only lose a lot of funds, but also reduce the funds he gets, and accordingly, the funds for developing the Order of the Phoenix will be much less. This is not in Dumbledore's personal interest in any way. In this regard, Turner's eyes showed a very puzzled expression. It seems that Turner's doubts were expected. Dumbledore did not wait for Turner's to raise his own questions, and he started to explain first. Indeed, this would seem a bit unwise, but I have to do it. Dumbledore sighed helplessly, and then slowly explained the whole story. In fact, over the years, Hogwarts has been constantly infiltrated by the black hands of the outside world. These black hands come from many aspects, not only the Ministry of Magic, but also some family forces, some of which support me and some support Voldemort. For so long, the influence of these black hands has been growing. Yes, I have to compromise with them, but, as you know, human desires are endless, not to mention that some people still have ulterior motives. As a place to train the next generation of wizards, I can't tolerate it continuing to be tainted. Therefore, now I must have a certain voice, not much, but must have, only in this way, I can ensure that in the future, Hogwarts will not fall into the vortex of some people's power struggles due to some minor changes. Dumbledore stopped explaining here and did not continue to go deeper, but Turner's also knew something, and compared with the original plot, Dumbledore obviously noticed something. Turnus had foresight and could understand that this was an action by the Malfoy family, or Voldemort and his gang, and fudge from the Ministry of Magic, targeting Dumbledore. Now that he understood, Turnus naturally would not hesitate any longer. Although he looked only 11 years old, his inner soul determined that he was not a child who knew nothing. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.